Hi guys. Hi. Firstly, welcome, welcome everyone to this uh, to this session on debunking myths, MBA and beyond. Specifically focused on NMIM students will be joining this year, and uh, it's it's a privilege to have like six NM uh, passouts in this particular frame. You know, passouts from 2019, batch from 2020, batch from 2021, batch. So we are like you know three different generations kind of <laughs> kind of a setup over here. So quickly, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it to Leela to first introduce the panelists as, uh, and then we'll move into the session as well as the agenda of the session. Yeah, Leela, please. Uh, do you want to give it another two minutes for people to join? Because, or do you want to just start off right away? Uh, maybe you can, I mean, we can, we can give like an introduction part because uh, then these people in the next 15 minutes will be able to join. Maybe start off with your introduction, a little bit about Edu if you, if sure. you don't mind. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, all right, guys. So I'm sure you all know about EduU. It's a mentorship platform. It's mainly to help all of you guys, especially the MBA aspirants, the ones who are going to start their journey. And we're going to handhold you literally because none of us, I think, from, uh, you know, back when we did our MBA, we never had mentors like we did have in terms of when we joined the college and speaking to seniors. But here it's like a complete, you know, a two month program kind of a thing where you have mentors all throughout the journey. So there's a lot to learn and a lot to gain. And of course, you all need to make the best out of it. So speaking about me, of course, so, you know, most of you all must be knowing me. In fact, quite a few have gotten in touch with me one on one. I've spoken to quite a few students uh, who are joining NM. So uh, I belong to the 2019 batch interned with the General Electric in their FMP program. I converted the PPO as well across uh, supply chain finance, FP&A roles. And at the end of my MBA, I had three job opportunities, mainly cause of competitions. So just want you all to kind of channel your direction in the same way. And I even won the Chancellor's Gold Medal at NM, which is the most coveted award. So we want to make sure that you guys can carve your journeys super well. And so that's why here we are as EduU. Uh, so let me now introduce our uh, panelists. So from the marketing side of it, we have Pavan. So he passed uh, in 2020 and currently he's working as the ASM at emerging, I mean, at Pidilite in the emerging market section. He received a PPO from Pidilite and he's very passionate about sales, marketing. In fact, he is also very good at public speaking and international relations because he was even the president of the NMIMS Toastmasters Club. And he won one of the most, most prestigious competitions for marketing enthusiasts, the LMS, which is an NM competition. And it's really tough. So all you marketing enthusiasts, please ask him all questions possible. Uh, then for operations, we have Pratyaksh. All right. Uh, he is a mechanical engineer, has had two years of work experience before joining MBA at NM. And he has specialized in ops and data analytics. And right now he works with FedEx. So everything related to ops, please, you all know who to ask. Uh, we have Chirag. Um, that's uh, he's he's into HR and he completed his BTEC from Bits Pilani. Uh, he has his, uh, you know, most of his work ex before MBA from Dubai as the business development executive. And he began his MBA journey interned with positive moves. And he was part of one of the most prestigious committees at NMIMS, uh, the placement committee. So uh, I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions to ask him. And yeah, he's currently working at Cognizant as a senior business analyst. And Harsh, you yeah. can uh, introduce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And lastly, I mean, I'll introduce myself as well as Soumya, both both from uh, the investment banking domain as well as you know from the finance fraternity. So, Soumya passed out uh, with us in the 2019 batch. She turned with JP Morgan as an investment bank analyst and then converted it into a PPO. Then worked there for a one year before shifting to State Street. Currently, where she's working as a portfolio strategist. And uh, someone who was very diligent in studies, you know, with, with respect to her CGPA or, you know, participations in uh, in the class lectures. So I think if, if you guys want to know anything about whether you should be, you know, attentive during classes, whether that will add any value, I think Soumya would be the right person. And with respect to, uh, you know, someone whom you want to connect with who has not uh, interacted in classrooms, I'm the one. So, I I mean, most of you guys would be knowing me. I'm I'm Harsh and uh, I also passed out in 2019 batch. I, I'm a BCom, BCom graduate. And I was a fresher when I joined the college. I interned at Duffin Phelps, which is like a pure valuations company into the valuations profile post, which uh, 
I, I joined Goldman Sachs as a, as an investment banking analyst. I worked there for a couple of years, and and then in 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 last month during the last month, I kind of made this decision to move on in life from from that particular company where I'd actually dreamed of uh, kind of uh, working. So currently. Uh, that's that's the situation with respect to me. Obviously, if I if I kind of state some some good things about you know my experience at NMIMS would be uh, the last day, uh, specifically the last day which was the graduation day for us, like the convocation because we were lucky because we were the only ones. I mean, we were the last batch to have our convocation offline, and uh, obviously that that particular day got the Dun and Bradstreet Student of the Year award for you know whatever accolades and whatever competitions I had won during my time. Obviously, don't want to boast about it. But yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want to know about how to how to kind of approach these competitions, which can you know add value to your CV, because during during my summers, I had faced a lot of problems due to my profile as well as you know my background. So I had to do something you know kind of path breaking to make these companies realize that I was worth for it. So yeah, that's that's the thing, and that's about the introduction. We we'll quickly kind of leave it to the panelists to uh, take it further if if they want to add something to their experience, anything to your, uh, about their introduction which we might have missed. Definitely, we would we would definitely have, and also if they want to share something about their journey at NMIMS, you know, how did they go about preparing for the first trimester or summers, which is like two months, three months down the line. I mean, if you join in June, probably your summers would start from the month of September, August end. So, so any any sort of an experience that you want to share with us, probably that that's how we we'll kickstart the session. So I'll I'll probably leave it to, I think Pawan. So Pawan can start off, and then you know one by, one by one we can uh, we can do that. Sure. Hey all. First of all, once again, a warm welcome to all the enthusiastic twenty three batch members. You guys were here from five forty five, man. I mean that's I mean three forty five. Uh, that's some enthusiasm, <laughs> which is, I would say, was not there in my batch. But you guys seem to be quite active, and which is a good thing. And like uh, Leela and uh, Harsh had already uh, given you what we are going to talk about today. But I would take you through my journey of NMIMS from my perspective. Uh, before NM, like all of you, I am also from uh, the engineering two years IT work experience. <laughs> And the MBA background, uh, so I can uh, whatever questions you have in that aspect, I can answer it from my perspective as well as yours because I have been there. But before NM, it was I was completely at sea. To be very honest, I was like you guys. I was texting seniors on LinkedIn. I was getting contact numbers through my friends of whoever was in NM. Luckily for me, two to there were two to three good friends who had joined NM, so they were quenching my thirst of all the doubts that I had. So I was lucky in that aspect, and after that, of course, you guys are in an online mode of MBA. But one big headache for people who are going in an offline mode of MBA is searching for a house in Mumbai. Uh, so that was a big, big headache after landing in Mumbai. So <laughs> that gives you sleepless nights and days where you don't focus on things that are important, but you keep running around Andheri, Juhu, Le <laughs> Parle, and Santa Cruz to search for a place to live. And the places that you see, you feel will feel like na kaha agya hoon zindagi mein. So <laughs> that, uh, but eventually, like uh, every everything else in Mumbai, things settle down. You fall in love with the city. But the initial days, it was all, I would say, a little dumbfounding. Uh, from coming from Vishakhapatnam to Mumbai was a complete leap of uh, ch change. It was difficult initially. Uh, the magnanimity of the city and the people—it uh, was completely a culture change from Vishakhapatnam to Mumbai. So that was initially tough. But then you are an MBA student. There's a reason why you're shortlisted by NMIMS. You get adjusted to things. Just be confident about yourself. Make friends, uh, and that—that that is one thing that I would recommend all of you to do, whether it's online or offline mode. Keep texting people randomly. Make friends and. Just increase your network right from day one, and trust me, it will help you like anything going forward at NMIMS. And yeah, one stupid thing that we do before NMIMS is the Harvard modules, <laughs> which I'm sure even all of you will get. And uh, Ashwini Dige, uh, if she is your coordinator, she'll bombard you with mails related to that. She's a sweet lady, otherwise, but in terms of Harvard modules, she screws your life like anything. Even if you uh, at our time the cutoff was seventy percent. Uh, but uh, we ended up failing 
some of the modules and again we had to give the retest but they are very strict related to that and you will clear that somehow just don't prepare for it you don't need any preparation <laughs> just go into the exam hall on that particular day things will figure themselves out but just get the cut off cross that's it you need to just be good with control c and control v now without <laughs> spilling any more beans i'd like to hand it over to the next panelist to take you through if there's something that i have yeah. Somya, if you could uh, light on this. Hi guys, first of all, welcome to NMIMS. Uh, I'm sure you're going to hell, have a hell of a journey. Um, well, I don't know. We had uh, we had online. We didn't have online classes, so I can't speak uh, from behalf of Chirag and Pawan. Uh, so they can guide you better through that. But uh, uh, that apart, I don't think you should be worried much about the online part. Uh, you should be more focused. I mean, yeah, like Harsh was telling, I was too focused on listening and classes and stuff. Uh, don't be me, honestly. Um, you don't have to be so serious. Um, you can, um, you would like, you can listen in classes, prepare for case studies. I think I would go by that route. But at the end of the day, um, group studies and uh, sitting with your um, batchmates in library, if not library, virtually right now, uh, that would help a lot. Because it's through group studies is what, when you learn a lot rather than those classroom learnings. Because uh, teachers will tell their uh, uh, what uh, how to uh, answer their in in their way. But when it comes to case studies, it's better to discuss among yourselves. Uh, form a group. Uh, I think um, in our batch we had formed like a uh, like from different streams across. Like Pratyaksh, I was there in Pratyaksh group. Pratyaksh was in operations. I was in finance, and there was uh, one more guy from uh, marketing, and uh, so on and so forth. So you don't have to be like from finance. You need to form groups in your own um, form of study. So you can just uh, form a diverse group, and that will help a lot because uh, it will help you network better. And uh, the core essence of MBA is networking. I would say. Uh, make as many friends as possible. Your badge, your junior badge, your senior badge. Interact with them. Uh, in LinkedIn is the best source. Uh, you can find your junior badge, your senior badges over there, and uh, that would help a lot because you'd be interacting with them, asking them how to, how did they go about their journey. You have a better idea. And uh, like Pavan mentioned, yes, uh, Bombay was a tough city for all of us. It was a fun city, but uh, you know the city is very busy, so. Uh, you really need to catch up to the speed of the city. So um, that way, we um, there was a lot of traffic because we had to travel across. Like I was staying in the hostel for the girls because most of the girls take the hostel. Um, so if you're not from Bombay, then better than finding a place to stay. Hostel was the easier way to go. But yeah, right now one advantage of virtual thing is that you don't have to spend on uh, the cost of living. Cost of living in Bombay is hell lot. So that way, you'll be saving up a lot on that. Um, but uh, other than that, um, in Bombay, we really used to like stay up in college most of the times. Uh, in classrooms, used to sit together to do after college hours, to do our projects, to do case study competitions. There were a lot of things that you would be bombarded, especially in the first year. But uh, including the Harvard modules, which you'll be getting soon. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you would have got it. You would have started preparing. Some studious people like me would have. But but just manage seventy percent because at the end of the day that's what matters. First trimester will be hard because uh, just after the first trimester you will be having all these um, uh, companies coming for internships and uh, new first trimesters. You there will be a lot of case study competitions through which uh, there will be a chance of uh, PPIE and other things. So. Um, um, there will be workshops and uh, there will be committee selection processes. So a lot of things will happen during your first trimester. But guys, you need to stay focused and uh, don't uh, freak out. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. First trimester, we were all freaked out before coming to MBA. I was really nervous uh, because I had two years of experience though. But still, it wasn't what we did in engineering or what you would have done in your BCom. But um, when you come there, uh, there you'll, be, you'll be overwhelmed basically. But don't take it too seriously. Be casual. Make a lot of friends. I think they are the ones. Peer pressure is best in this scenario because they are the ones who will lighten the mood and help you a lot during your MBA journey. So yeah, all the best. I think uh, we'll interact further in uh, the coming session. Yeah, I'll I'll just move on to Chirag now. So Chirag, if you can throw some light on your experience. So hi everyone. 
uh i just graduated from nmims and uh, i had the best of both worlds my first year was uh, offline setup and the second year was an online setup so i had to you know go through the pros and cons of uh, each of the scenarios uh life in bombay is too fast as uh, you know told by somya already but uh, at the same time you save up on a lot of costs when you are living in the online setup but yes one thing is for sure that while studying in an online mode and it is going to be online for all of you maybe at least for the first term so there's a lot of procrastination which bounce to creep in so you have to you know be on your toes and um, go and be part of some clubs or committees and try to find your forte your forte can be the case study competitions it can be uh, clubs or committees you want to represent nmims at a corporate front or maybe you are a cat centric i uh, personally feel that you know take part as in as many activities as possible and uh, try to make as many friends as possible because you know at the end of the day peer learning is something which is uh, which becomes the strength of nmi nmims because uh, you know our batch strength is quite uh, good so uh, this is a cutthroat competition too uh, while you will be going through the mba journey but you will end up making a lot of friends so yes looking forward to interact with all of you thank you chirag thank you Okay. Lastly, we'll just move to Pratyaksh. Uh, so, uh, all your operations, analytics, queries, everything Pratyaksh will be handling. So, Pratyaksh, all on you. Hey, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, hey, hello everyone. So, I think Pawan, Chirag, and Somesri have already covered everything that I wanted to say. But uh, yeah, apart from that, I, I'm just reiterating here. But as they have already mentioned, the best thing about it is interaction and networking. So just try to get along with everybody as much as possible, and uh, yeah, try to uh, look look towards which competitions you want to go for. There will be a lot of things in the first trimester, and uh, honestly, you need to try to find out uh, your path as much as possible. Right? Which competitions you want to go for, which uh, which things you want to focus on. There will be a lot of committees, a lot of things going on. So just try to find out what you want to do. And uh, be focused on that. And as Samshri <laughs> mentioned, it did not necessarily be always, always be like uh, too much paraku in books and be, be very attentive during the classes. It's it's more about experiences, learning, and networking, and uh, and peer peer learning. Yeah. Pratyak, uh, just one thing uh, that th there's some lag with your voice. So if you can, even if you switch off your video, at least your voice if it can be better. Probably we just work on it by the time we'll come back to you. Okay. So yeah, thanks, thanks to all the panelists for uh, like throwing some light on, on this particular aspect of your experience. Tila, if you can uh, right. take us through the next. Um, so firstly, thank you so much, guys. It's 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 been really nice to know you know the experience uh, in a small form. But now I'm going to ask you also. All of you all stressed a lot on the first trimester being pretty taxing, and I can totally relate because uh, I don't know if uh, you know you all know, but I I think Somya and Harsh very well know. In the first three months, I literally went up till the dean to kind of leave MBA. I was that persistent on leaving MBA because there was so much. It is very overwhelming. So I want to know what did you guys do, kind of, you know, in terms of prioritization and something that you all did differently that could, you know, or help you all uh, ace the journey and get your PPOs and your great placements, right? So yeah, oh, oh, how to you, Pavan? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> from the next question onwards, can you go backwards? <laughs> Because. Every question, I'm the first one going, but yeah, no issues. Sure. Uh, I'll give you my perspective of the first trimester because I personally did a, I would say a lot of things wrong, and I would highlight them so that you guys don't go that way. And there were some things that I did right, and I would highlight that also so that you guys can put that in spotlight when you guys go into the first trimester. So yeah. First thing that I did was I took up a lot of responsibilities. Uh, I was. in the place com and the first for the entirety of first year i was with the division representative of my other placement committee uh, for my division and then uh, i was in toastmasters whatever little time i used to sneak out from place com i used to run to the toastmasters meetings and i was a little scared <laughs> by the finance subjects because i was those were i was seeing them for the first time and i was all at sea when it comes to finance so and one good thing that i uh, that happened to me here was my friend circle uh, 
it was a good mix of people who were uh, good at heart, who were extremely skilled in terms of finance or be it any other subject. So these people, no matter how berserk things went at times in terms of workload or in terms of whatever that was happening around us in MBA, we stuck together this group of six to seven people and we made sure that no matter how tough life got, we were there for each other and helping each other out uh, after those long hours at work. Or the library during uh, on working days is open till 11, 30, 12. On uh, exams, uh, it is open till three. So <laughs> library was second home. Uh, no matter what day it was, be it till 12 a.m. or be it till 3 a.m. the next morning. Uh, so this one thing that I would tell you is no matter online or offline, make this group of good seven to eight people very early in the first trimester so that this is a group that you look up to and look forward to whenever you're in college or doing anything related to college. And things not to do, don't put your leg in too many things. Don't go into too many committees. Just focus on one committee that absolutely interests you. If you're someone who's looking forward to marketing, just NJM or AdWork, nothing else. Uh, if you're someone who has very specific interests, who is good with music, who is good with sports, go into that particular sports committee or the music cell, the distribble makers, or if you're good with quizzing and eco economics, or so go to Mantavia, Equilibria, be very focused. There's, it's nothing like one committee is big, another committee is small, one club is big, one club is small. It's end of the day, it's about the value you get out of it and figure it out very early. Don't put your leg into too many things. First trimester is all about taking the right decisions and not getting succumbed by your wrong decisions. Uh, realize early if you're doing something wrong, just step back, uh, see if you are gaining any value out of it and just stay there. Leave everything else. And coming to summers, we'll focus a little more on it going forward in the next questions. So this is just a bird's eye view about the first trimester I wanted to give you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Pawan. I think we'll move on to Pratyaksh right now. Let's go the other way. Yeah, okay. Pratyaksh. Uh, I just want to check if my voice is clear or not right now. I think it is a slightly, it's, it's slightly lagging even now. So, okay. yeah, maybe if you not could, sure. maybe if only the voice is also on, I think that could help. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. Not? Yes, this is good. Okay, so uh, about the first trimester, uh, I think as Pawan mentioned, try to focus on uh, what you want to do, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, not getting into too many things might help you, uh, mm -hmm. but I would say just try to find out, uh, don't, so first trimester is where you can actually try to test different things as well. Uh, it will be a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but try to just get through it and uh, once you get to the first trimester, I can assure you, assure you the rest of the trimesters would be uh, definitely easily uh, doable. Uh, so, uh, one thing that did help me during my first trimester was was the fact that uh, I used to live in a rented apartment. Uh, uh, Pratyaksh, I think uh, there is quite a bit of an internet I, problem. I think you can rejoin. I think, I think you could problem. rejoin and maybe, you know, we can... It'll be great if right. you... Yeah. yeah. And NJM stands for not just marketing, right, Pavan? NJM committee. Yeah. So actually, so Pavan, you, had, you had mentioned about NJM and Adverb both, but you should know that these people have not joined NJM, so they don't know what NJM, Adverb, Fino, or what these these abbreviations. These people might not know. So right. just elaborate on the next time when you mention it. Okay. No yeah, problem. So now we'll on. move on to yeah, we'll move on to Chirag. Maybe you could just uh, you know tell us your bit. So hi yeah. everyone. Uh, I'll tell you guys about my first semester experience. So don't be, uh, you know, don't be too worried about how things are going to be in the orientation program. You'll get to know about all the clubs and committees and how they function so that uh, you have a wide array of clubs and committees and clubs to choose from. So in my first semester, I was inclined towards Placecom. So I joined Placecom. I joined the E-cell, which is the entrepreneurship cell. I joined Drunk Punch, which is the dramatic cell, and I was inclined towards sports also. So I did my tad bit over there as well. So as you see that I had my, uh, you know, stuff in a lot of different clubs and committees. So I was not able to manage them properly. So what you have to do is you have to prioritize where you actually see yourself and what interests you the most. For me, since I'm in uh, HR, 
so as as a placement committee member you get to interact with a lot of corporates so i was like that you know this is something which i want to do uh, after 2 years and this is something which will actually help me with my mba journey so which is why i chose placecom apart from that uh, one advice to all of you for the competitions is that you know try as many teams as possible in the first semester so that you get to know about the strengths of your peers i was lucky to have won two case study competitions that was because i had a good team not because i was a you know i was some exceptional candidate or something so try out as many teams as possible and maintain decent academics like you it, it might be your priority to be in the dean's list and have you know like 3.5 plus gpa but maintain decent acads at least you know so that you can get a shortlist later on uh, while you are sitting on for your final placements so that's awesome. my two cents awesome thank you so much yaar chirag so moving on to okay. somya yeah just yeah. Uh, if you could just Add like a follow-up question to Chirag that she he mentioned that you know you have to have like a 3.5 CGP or something he mentioned you know in terms of number so you know it it might just prop up to to the students as to what is that safe number which you should obtain for the purpose of at least not having problem with respect to the shortlist so if Chirag you can throw some light on that yeah so at least maintain above three. that is uh, what i call a decent cgpa and uh, i think the top 50 candidates get to be in the dean's list so that is something which will be told to you while you are there in the official orientation of nmms if they ought to change the rules maybe right i think 3.2 or 3.22 onwards you get into the dean's list just to let you all know and uh, raise- yeah pavan raise- exactly what i was about to <laughs> No, no. I mean, for our batch, it was much higher because there were people who were scoring about three point four in wholesale. So three point four seven was the cutoff. So <laughs> oh my to... God, that's crazy! <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, firstly, HR committee is Rudai. Just for you all to know, and Somya, you could just let us know about your trimester prioritization first time. Okay, uh, so I think I've given a brief about how a first trimester was. I mean, it was overwhelming for me and as well as the entire batch. Uh, so uh, I I did try to put my leg in all the uh, like everything possible. I was I wanted to get into uh, all the committees possible. You need to prioritize like how Chirag and Pavan mentioned. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be difficult. Uh, you know, uh, in focusing on your studies and with internship coming up and case study competitions so there will be a lot of things in your bucket guys so you need to select one particular committee like for me and for instance uh, i i knew from day one that i wanted to get into finance for finance phenomenon is the go to committee um economics and all uh, you can look into all that uh, but for finance i think uh, phenomenon is a good to come good to go Uh, because uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities there in terms of uh, investment management, and uh, uh, we have our own fund, Samriddhi. So that way, uh, we had good learning over there. Uh, we learnt a lot in that committee for finance, I would say. But um, if you're interested in marketing, like Pawan was mentioning, you have to go for not just marketing, NGM, and uh, uh, so so operations. Pratyaksh will talk more about Optimus. So uh, you need to be very specific from day one. I know it's difficult to decide which stream you want to take, uh, but uh, it's better to prioritize from the, from the day one. I, I think you can talk to your seniors, and that will give you a better idea for that matter. Uh, so that is one committee is one, and uh, there will be as soon as you get into the college, there will be co- committee selection processes that will start around second third week of the. the Uh, as soon as you get in, uh, I think it will be in June third week. So um, you need to be focused on that. Then there will be case study uh, competitions that will start. So uh, for us, the first case study competition uh, which I took part was from a committee called ESL. Uh, I ha- and uh, we won that case study competition, <laughs> and that was like. Uh, from then on i was like i wanted to get into all the uh, case study competitions possible not just finance and uh, guys uh, that way it didn't help me so you again when what pavan was telling for committee you need to be focused on case study competitions as well if you know you are a marketing person then go for all the marketing uh, case study competitions because i for me uh, since i won that competition i wanted to get into marketing case study competitions as well it didn't help me a lot because there were a lot of things in my, in my bucket at that point in time so be focused on which case study competitions you want to take part in like chirag mentioned form as many groups as possible you shouldn't be restricting yourself because if you know if it's not working out with one group then it's better to move on so 
that's the thing you just have two years guys so that is second thing and um, the third thing is there will be a lot of uh, first year uh, i don't know i was an engineer so for me um, for finance honestly even i had not not much of an idea uh, it was difficult uh, competing with uh, uh, leela and other people who had a chat to see so see or see it for that matter and uh, uh, accounting was difficult i mean i still find it difficult balancing a uh, balance sheet for, for that matter but um, i think if you focus on finance i would suggest um, read up cfa material this captain shoes the notes uh, that's it, it explains you in a very um, uh, what do you say uh, a dummy way of understanding finance so i think you can take it up and if you even if you're not giving cfa it's good to read that book even i had read that book harvard modules help but I think CFA was a better way of explaining. Um, Kaplan Shuzu notes were a better way of explaining. So I think you should go through that. Um, uh, during my classes, also I I used to go through that, and uh, there was a book called Financial Reporting Analysis FRA. I used to go through that book, and it helped me a lot in accounting. Because for engineers, obviously, we don't know anything, and um, you need to be prepared. Um, even in class, I think they will straight away jump to, especially if you have a teacher called Smita Majumdar, he will directly jump into the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it will be very difficult for you to comprehend. Uh, for engineers, especially, I can say, read that book. That will help you a lot. Um, so these are the three major things: case study, uh, co committee, and this that you need to be focused on. Apart from that, second trimester onwards, I know we are talking about first trimester, but second trimester onwards, you will start with uh, your internship. Uh, Uh, companies will start coming in. In first trimester, we had workshops. GS and JP had workshops. So um, GS was looking for freshers, so that way uh, they didn't select me. Uh, but that was it's it's just depends on the company. So don't be demotivated that way. JP uh, also did workshops. Be prepared. Uh, they will give you some case study. You need to be prepared with that. So. Um, uh i think uh, for preparing for internship i mean across finance marketing i'm saying and operations uh is they i think uh, even placecom i'm not sure you can check again but placecom gives a dossier so uh, you need to read up on those dossiers and uh, be prepared what kind of questions can come up and they will conduct all these sessions prep sessions so you need not be worried with that so uh, for internship also you're set so in lm i don't think you have to worry much about anything form good groups and you will be good to go Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, yeah, Somya, for that. And I think Pratyaksh is back. Hopefully, the connection is better. And if you could just speak about trimester one, Pratyaksh. Pratyaksh, are you there? Uh, hello. Can you hear me? I have a lot yeah. of issues. Yeah, but your network is honestly not as good even now. Uh, okay. Uh, is it still not good without the? I think it's it's a bit better. Maybe you can just yeah. Yeah, if you can just switch your location, probably go somewhere because you when you were joined, you know, second time you joined, it was good. So probably do something with okay. respect to you know whatever yeah, you done. Yeah, I think keep point. the video off because uh, I think that's a little better. Exactly. So just right. don't even let me switch on your video. Okay. By the yeah. time he he works on his connection, let's again. Uh, I mean, there there are certain things which Somya has mentioned. Okay. First, first and foremost, I'll just mention this particular thing that uh, whatever questions you you guys are putting on the live chat, you will be taking those questions towards the end of the session. So please reserve your questions for that for that time. We will we'll, we'll answer you know most of the questions related to all those different things which have been mentioned by the panelists about you know case study competitions or your summer internships or, or with respect to clubs and committee selections and everything. So we will be taking all those questions towards the end. So please reserve your questions. Uh, yeah. for, and don't worry, guys. We are reading the chat box. I, we can see like lot of questions yeah. coming in, but we want to cover a lot of things for you all. All right. Exactly. And it's not just the first session that we are doing. Obviously, we'll be doing a three point two session as well. Because obviously it's difficult to it's difficult because it's a batch of six hundred you know because it's difficult to take all the questions in one session so obviously we we plan something as well if the questions are not answered in this particular session it will be answered in the next session okay right having said that yeah Lila let's move forward yeah all right uh so a question to all of y'all uh so 
I want to. I think Somya was very sure that she wanted finance. But uh, what if someone's not really sure if they want to do finance, marketing, operations? You know. So what kind of advice will you all give? So Pavan, oh, oh, okay, let's go to Chirag. Okay, Chirag was HR. So Somya, but what kind of advice will you give in case someone is confused and they want to do like both? So if you could just help out. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of friends who uh, found it difficult in the first trimester to decide. Um, even BCom students, they have done finance, but they wanted to get into marketing. But uh, there were BCom students, they wanted to continue in the finance domain. I think even Leela was confused after the first trimester. Even she wanted marketing, I mean, after completing CA. Very true. So, so, so I mean, people will get confused, and uh, no doubt about it. Um, uh, but I think the main focus, what you can do right now, is talk to your seniors. Like, um, accounting will be demotivating. And uh, you might feel that you can't go to finance, but I'm telling you, accounting is not the end of the world, and that's not going to decide your future in finance. Um, it's it's you're doing an MBA. I mean, it's more of into a finance strategy kind of a stuff. What you're going to uh, go for even in companies, even investment banking for that matter. Accounting is not what they are looking for. Even they are, won't ask you any questions in that. So that I think the subjects in first trimesters are is not the thing based on which you're going to decide uh, which career path they're going to take. I would suggest uh, talk to your seniors uh, before you join the before you join NM and uh, find out what how uh, each of the specialization was like in for instance finance like i mentioned uh, this is the thing like you don't have to be focused on one particular subject you need to understand an overall structure you need to understand which you won't be getting in the first trimester uh, you can read up on uh, some stuff you can read up quora you can talk to seniors you can uh, for marketing for instance um, case study competitions do help you know that you can think of uh, you can think of along those lines if you're interested in uh, those kind of things i mean i used to love reading marketing case studies but at the end of the day i chose finance as my career so so that way um, talk to your seniors and uh, i think um, do as many case study competition in your first trimester and that will help you deciding which stream you want to take and um, uh in internship also i would say some people had done finance internship but had uh, ended up in uh, a strategy kind of a role or a consulting kind of a role so that is also something that can help you so uh, add as many linkedin uh, in linkedin as add as many seniors as possible and talk to them that would help you awesome awesome somia i think let's move to pavan and let me know if you were really you know from the first day you wanted to do marketing or what was it like Uh, so yeah, uh, before I joined NM, I was somewhere particular that I would be looking at something apart from finance. But the day I came into NM, I felt that let's give everything a shot because I was from engineering plus IT background, and I was not sure what would go well with my profile. So I thought let's go all out. Let's have an open outlook. Uh, let's see how the subjects are. because first trimester there are uh, quite a few subjects which give you a good opportunity to look into each of the domains there's an operations subject there's a marketing subject there's a finance subject obviously accounts which is not the best of the subjects to begin with but <laughs> it still does give you a fair bit idea of uh, what is waiting for you going forward uh, so that happened and after the first one week to 10 days i was very clear that finance is something that i don't want to do I keep saying there's some lag. We can hear you. We can hear you. It it was Pratyak yeah. actually. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So uh, after it became clear that I'm not going to do finance, I was very clear that I would sit for all the marketing companies as well as all the IT companies, which would definitely add for add my experience would come in handy there, and also all the consulting companies. so that is what i did in summers i applied for everything but finance and my shortlist ratio was fairly good enough and uh, leela do you want me to focus on how the preparation for summers went but that that was going to be my next segment so just wait for it maybe we can just uh, you know yeah go on to uh, pratyaksh if in case he has been able to join and the network is better pratyaksh did you know from day 1 that you wanted to do operations or how was it Yeah, uh, just let me know if I'm audible or not. I think this not is sure. perfect. Yes, you're you're audible. Yeah, yeah. Now it's perfect. Okay. 
so for me i mean i was very sure about operations from day 1 uh, but i can tell you about uh, the uh, since i was living with four other friends two of them were from hr so they were also very sure but the other two were not very sure some uh, they were not sure if they wanted to do pharma uh, finance or marketing but i think as some uh, some mentioned the first first trimester would uh essentially help you to uh, understand whether or not you want to do finance or marketing because the subjects and the competitions that you try to go through will help you understand if you are better with marketing or if you are uh, if if it's something if finance is something that's uh, that's your game uh, and even there is a, a another uh, gen, uh, general management if you want to take up so that's also an option for you uh, and uh, so people have this thought that since the sec- since in the uh, second trimester we have to select a internship a company uh, we have to take up internships in the second trimester so we need to get ourselves as to what we want to do so it's sort of true that yeah uh, maybe if you can uh, get to one particular uh, f- focus on one particular field uh, it helps but in case let's say you Uh, did marketing in uh, you did internship in marketing background and uh, if you if maybe after the internship you want to sh- change your mind to finance it's not the end of the world uh, i have seen some people do that uh, but you uh, you need to answer be able to answer yourself why you want to switch over in in the final trimester uh, final placements but uh, that's not the end of the world as well so i think the first trimester is very important to focus uh, to try to understand what you want to do uh, but uh, at the end of the first year i said, i think you should be very clear as to what you want to do right perfect perfect pratyaksh in fact i think i'll just add something here uh, he's right in the first trimester it's uh, you're very you know you you get get to understand like in my case when i was confused with between marketing and finance i knew that i had such a good upper hand in terms of finance because my basics in terms of accounting and everything was so strong so for me starting finance and then starting into sales position is something that i had to question myself that is it something that i want to do or continue in a stream that i'm very good at so you need to question even your past background or and in case you're really confused like pratyaksh that we have friends who have done marketing internships and done you know got got uh, you know they they realize that that is not their you know cup of tea and they switch to finance later on and they get a final placement also and you can kind of you know mention it on the cv in a way that you all can just you know place your uh, uh, internship very well to kind of help that uh, harsh you can add something or else we can move to the next question because i think chirag was in a specialization hr and there's nothing that you all can do i'm assuming right apart from that in fact I'll, one I'll person pro- i'll probably add to this particular thing because uh, when we are talking about you know specializations and the confusion that happens in the first trimester itself actually it's not the confusion that's there in the minds of the students it's based on the shortlist that you get so I, i'll just share about you know my experience and the experience which i had with my roommates who were there uh, in in my first year so basically for the first couple of weeks we had applied for finance companies and we did not get shortlists so after a point of time you know you get frustrated looking at you know other your your peers getting placed at companies where you kind of dreamt of getting placed so what happens is in that frustration you kind of start applying to companies from other specializations also it it will definitely happen in nm considering the batch size 600 it will definitely happen like if you if you're not getting shortlist in the you know the first couple of weeks of your internship process you'll start applying to any random company just because that fear of missing out always prevails in an mba graduate so that thing happens and that happened with me as well you know for the first couple of weeks i did not get a shortlist obviously owing to my kind of low graduation scores because that's like a very uh, it's like basic filters these companies apply it's like 10 12 graduation so you have to have a, a, a at least kind of 80 80 70 if you have like across these three particular you know academic uh, backgrounds then you'll be in a good position but i did not have like 17 in my graduation or even 65 plus so that's where i kind of missed out and because i did not get shortlist i started applying to marketing companies because i saw that people with a similar kind of a profile had come from were getting shortlist in marketing so i thought let let me just do it because i am a fresher you know i can adapt to marketing i can adapt to finance so let me just get into marketing also so then i applied for marketing and then probably i got a shortlist from a marketing company i sat in the gd process and that's when i realized no this is not meant for me i cannot sit in a gd and kind of try to speak out at, at the top of my voice kind of cutting others that's not me i am someone who takes time you know to to kind of uh, understand certain things and then act based on the situation so i i thought marketing was not my game that point of time and then i stopped applying to marketing companies after 
a very bad experience in a gd process and that's when i applied say to the company where i got, uh, ultimately got shortlisted there was a gd process in that company so mostly you'll find less very very few finance companies have like a gd process because finance is not about group discussions it's about you know personal interviews what kind of skills do you have in terms of technical skills so there was a gd in that company you know because that, that was the first time the company was coming on the campus any any campus across india so they had a gd and the gd was at that point of time you know monetization was something which was at the forefront and the the topic for the gd was monetization and impact of monet- demonetization so that was the gd we cleared that particular thing and then we moved on to the the next round so, so basically with respect to the specialization it's not that you are confused situations will make you confused when you will not get a shortlist in a domain where you are inclined you get confused you tend to kind of apply to other domains which i will probably ask you guys to not do because at that point of time you will be you know i'll just give you a mindset in the first couple of weeks there would be some marketing companies if suppose you are a finance person okay there are some marketing companies which might have come in the first couple of weeks you did not apply them those were good companies you just applied in finance and then when you are not getting shortlist in finance companies you apply for some marketing companies which might come in the third week so ultimately you're missing out on marketing good companies also and then you're not getting shortlisted in finance also so ultimately you miss out on everything so be focused on the very first day so that there is no regret once you i mean if you're not getting placed you know very very soon so and that that's just about the experience which i face yeah leela let's right. let's move on i to the- i just want to ask because this topic has come i would want to ask chirag to throw some light on these kind of cases that have happened because you've worked you know in placecom you know what's happening so if you could just throw some light on that finance to marketing from summers to finals or vice versa yes actually uh, this is something which i have seen in day in day out that people are unclear about their specializations uh, you know in the third week they are applying absolutely to the operations companies marketing companies and you know if maybe initially they chose operations and later on they are applying to marketing companies because there are no operations companies left for them to apply so uh, you know you have these two months right now interact with as many people as you can from different domains and find out and figure out what is it that suits your best so um, also talking about the hr I, I, i've seen a lot of questions uh, about the hr placements and all we'll come to that later on but uh, talking about the hr as a specialization there is a huge scope in hr and um, the hr course of nmims mumbai is one of the most coveted one um, so i'll be talking more about it in the later segments but yes if you are taking hr you can uh, you know get exposed to the sales side of it you can also go into the employer branding which is the marketing side of it you can also go into hr consultancies uh, right now i am also you know in in a consultant role so there are a plethora of opportunities if you plan to take hr as well but yes if you have taken core then you cannot sit in for the placements of hr that is one thing which is for sure awesome awesome chirag all right so now i think i'll go on to the next segment and that's going to start with chirag itself uh, just to you know let them know how do they prep for summers so that would be like the main question now summer internship okay uh, so talking about summers first of all see you have to evaluate yourself if you are you know good at speaking because your communication skills play a huge role now considering that your summer internships would be virtual and that is for sure i'm i'm quite sure of it so you have to you know be very well versed with the zoom etiquettes how you look in front of the camera and how you are presenting yourself because had it been an offline mode they would have evaluated you based on your body language but you know it's a huge pro for the people who are not uh, you know very well versed with their body language or people who are very under confident or nervous at times while giving the interviews you can start practicing from now on about the basic hygiene questions you can just google it up there are plethora of you know hr based questions and you can prepare on for your interviews you know go look into the mirror start preparing you know tell me about yourself and basic questions about your strengths and weaknesses uh summers is relatively an easier nut to crack when it when you compare it with the finals because finals becomes you know really complex so uh, figure out the kind of companies where you want to uh, be just go out uh, you know search about the placement report you will get it online once you get the placement report search out for the alums on linkedin once you go on to linkedin and figure out the alums who are working try talking try connecting with them and talk to them about you know how what their job entails that will give you a clearer picture of how you know your corporate life is going to look and if that is something which you want to do and you know you can have the that on your dream companies list you should have your personal 
10 companies list where you would want to be in your summer internships based on the current placement report. So you should have those 10 companies and you should prepare accordingly as to what is asked in their uh, placement process. And you should you can start preparing for it now as well, because that interview is something which you will be giving in, you know, in, in your different walks of life, maybe three years later, two years later, you are going to take a switch. So you have to give an interview then also. So it's better to start preparing now, now that you have a lot of free time. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Chirag. Moving on to Soumya. Summers. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Chirag covered most of it. Coming from PlaceCorp, I think you should listen to him. Uh, he has seen, uh, over two years, he has seen how, uh, how students have uh, come across and how they have performed and uh, what has helped them. So I would say, um, Ki, yeah, first start preparing for hygiene because preparing for um, technical questions and stuff, it will take you some time. Uh, look at the market currently. What kind of questions can come in GD? Somebody in the comment section was asking, I'm an introvert. Can I, uh, like, how do I perform in GD? So I think uh, um, it doesn't really matter if you're an introvert. I was an introvert. And I'll tell you, uh, the workshop we had uh, uh, for JP Morgan, it was a fish market again. Uh, so, because they know in the during the workshop, they were noting down the people who were answering questions and who were like, basically they were speaking up. So it really matters. Like even if you're an introvert, just raise your hand and try. Like you will be given a chance to speak. So when you're given a chance, you start capitalize on that and uh, 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 try to take out, uh, speak on those points which others haven't spoken on. And that is going to make a differentiating factor for you. To be selected during and that did help me even in jp morgan uh, when uh, i was going for the workshop i was i was too nervous to even raise my hand and speak up but when they gave me a chance uh, i cracked it like i think I, I i spoke for five minutes in total because i had prepared whatever they had given a britannia annual report and uh, i had prepared that very well so i spoke on that and they were really impressed they wrote my name at that point in time so even if you're an introvert it doesn't matter if you can when you're getting a chance you just need the knowledge and the um uh, uh you know you need to be prepared that's all uh so how to prepare for uh this i think i mentioned that uh the uh, place call will give you a dossier and uh, that is being prepared by all the committees and uh, use that dossier efficiently uh, because uh, there are there are questions which have been asked in the past and uh, what you need to be prepared with and uh, that will help you a lot uh, because similar type of questions only will come during your interviews now there are two segments uh, I mean, I can uh, let me speak on the finance perspective right now. There are two segments of people. One is the finance, the BCom people who, have, who already have some knowledge, and there are engineers who don't have uh, um, that much knowledge in finance. Uh, and I'll tell you, once the workshop was done, when there were interviews, and uh, I was competing with CAs and CFAs over there, and I can tell you that they what they wanted to see was how you answer the question. Like, how do you attempt a question? If they give you guesstimates and ask you questions like, um, uh, so this is the scenario, how are you going to come up with it? Don't waste your time thinking. Speak out when you're, um, when, what you're thinking. And that's going to help you because they'll see a flow of thoughts at that point in time and they'll know that, uh, yeah, that person is able to uh, think along the right direction. Because ultimately, the end answer is not, this, uh, is not what matters. Uh, your process, thinking process is what they're looking for. So I think that's how you are going to crack an interview. And that is the biggest secret I have gone through in the past because I have switched a job also after JP Morgan. And I was part of HSBC for two years. And uh, I think I can speak for all three interviews. That's how I have cracked it. Because um, ultimately, end result, everyone can give an answer. But uh, but even if you can't give an answer and your process, thinking process is good, that's that's what they're going to like about you. So, so guys, talk when you're... Uh, when you are when they've given you a question so that is one and gd wise uh, like harsh mentioned yes uh, marketing will be a fish market uh, but again you will be given those one minute chance when you're going to speak up so make a differentiating factor over there that's going to help you and uh, i think marketing wise pavan can give you a better idea and uh, finance wise and this is what i can uh, guide you through awesome thank you so much somya so moving on to pavan Hey guys, so back to marketing. So I'll keep my answer specific to marketing as well as consulting as well as general management because I was predominantly applying to all the companies that fell under this bracket. And some of my dream companies encapsulated all these categories. So 
i'll give you what how my how my preparation was first of all there was very little time to prepare uh, because i was in the place com and as i said i was putting my leg into too many things uh, but uh, from what i observed during the placement process because there were multiple companies that i applied to and multiple processes that i was a part of as well as the first trimester that we had gone through uh, people who are going for marketing relax guys you there's nothing specific that you need to prepare from now onwards you just be yourself you just enjoy this time which is not going to come again in your life <laughs> don't do things that are not necessary so as chirag said people who are slightly on the introvert side uh, you attend as many mock gds as possible as many areas as possible where you can improve your uh, social personality uh, a person that you come out as uh, when you're sp- speaking to people and as i said there's no specific preparation that the placecom will give you dossiers those are more or less enough for covering your technical aspects of uh, a marketing interview uh, all that you need to do is agar mujhe ek gd mil gaya aaj ke aaj ke din agar 10 mein se ek banda shortlist ho raha hai wo ek banda main hona chahiye be that confident in your life be that confident in your group discussion be that confident in your speaking ability just kill it when it comes to group discussions be it a case discussion or a group discussion be very confident about your speaking ability and now how you can be very confident here one thing is improving your public speaking skills second thing is be very clear with current affairs whatever is happening around you but now we are in a time where there is a lot of overload of current affairs be it in terms of the political front or the financial front or whatever is happening with the vaccines or with the diplomacy just be very familiar with whatever is happening not completely in depth don't become an sme in that just have sufficient three to four points in a group discussion that you can add that other people are not adding so just be a step ahead over there and coming to consulting and genman profiles be very thorough with your work experience but aisa mat samjho ki main it se 2 saal kaam karke aaya hu ab wo work experience mere kaam nahi aayega it will be very very useful there might be profiles that are tailor made for you there might be profiles that are coming for the technology which you had already worked on in your 2 years of it work experience that is like jackpot ey uh, for the management consulting role it more or less came from something that i worked for for the past 2 years at accenture and i've breezed uh, breezed through the process till the interview uh, where i messed it up <laughs> so <laughs> that is how you guys need to be ready in terms of consulting and german be very thorough with your work experience and express it well that is what i would tell to marketing as well as german be very express perfect great great pawan thank you thank you so much and pratyaksh if you could just share your summer's experience yeah so again I, i i'll focus on operations so one thing good about operations is that generally when when there are gd in operations you will never hardly find fish market going on we personally never see uh, sometimes it so happens that there is nobody speaking for 10 15 seconds so in operations you will definitely get ample time to put your point forward so uh, i will just say that as others already mentioned be be very clear uh, have be very clear on the gd topics uh, there will be dossier you you will you will just need, have to work your way through uh, what are the different points that you want to uh you can just li- list down those points have those points in mind um uh, and when uh, when the gd comes just as as uh, pawan mentioned just try to kill it make sure that you are not uh, uh you do not miss any point don't be scared just say whenever uh, say whatever you want to say uh and about the interview i would say try to introspect as much as possible this is where uh, introverts are much ahead of the game in the game i would say just try to introspect as much as you as possible just try to think yourself how what is the different what are the different questions that uh, the fi- panelists can ask about you he is he or she is generally there to just gauge what how, what kind of person you are and if you are a fit for the company or not so just make sure that you know yourself as as much as possible uh, i personally took like at least two or three weeks every day i used to speak myself in the mirror or have a friend where where he would ask me questions and i would answer and he would say that this is not good this is good 
and uh, things like that so you can practice as much as possible uh, in online settings you can have uh, video calls for that and uh, yeah that's something that helped me and honestly when uh, this is not about uh, so uh, during the final interviews when i uh, when uh, fedex uh, when i had my interview with fedex uh, they had i had a list of uh, questions that in my mind which uh, i thought that they would ask me and trust me they literally asked every single point that i had in mind and by the time they had asked the last question i was like what else can they ask this is over i have nothing more to say about myself and that was actually the last question that they had and i was like oh my god they have asked everything about me so just be very clear be very uh, be a subject matter expert of yourself i would say <laughs> Yeah. Awesome, right, right. That's very nice, Pratyaksh. In fact, I would want to even share that you know, in terms of uh, whatever all of them have said, it's exactly true. Uh, create kind of an Excel sheet. You know, know what kind of companies are coming on the campus, what kind of profiles they are offering. Yes, they do come out with JDs, job descriptions, so you can kind of understand what kind of a job you will be applying to. You know, so when you see that JD, you'll know. Okay, this is maybe meant for you, meant for not meant for you. so it depends on that make that excel sheet keep yourself completely updated ki who you know who's going to be coming next on campus and if all of that so that's that's something that will always help you all and create a question bank like keep adding questions you sit for more and more interviews you keep getting more and more questions right so keep adding it to the question bank especially the ones that you have missed answering right and uh, yeah rejection will happen uh, in summers especially it's going to be like your first uh, you know interview experience during an mba rejections are going to happen in fact sometimes you might even assume that you know you're selected and you might still be rejected so it's okay don't get bogged down you you will get your company you will get your job so you don't have to worry and don't like harsh said fomo don't just apply everywhere that that won't really help in, help you in the long run and uh, harsh if you have anything to add then please yeah sure sure so i mean just taking your point forward taking somia's point forward and uh, you know about fomo so basically this thing happened with me as well like i said you know i started applying to other other kind of specialization roles as well but after a point of time i had decided that you know nm was not the place to be for me at least because i was not getting that particular um, you know shortlist and the company which i had joined for so basically i had went through the placement reports and you know talked to a couple of seniors and there were some companies which i had in mind when those companies did not shortlist me and uh, so i had probably decided that probably i should you know kind of reattempt cat and again sit for those processes and i had totally decided that this this would probably would be my last day and you know tickets and everything were booked for me and i was almost almost i had decided to kind of leave but that particular day you know in the, in the evening itself i got the shortlist for the company i went for the process and then i got selected in the night so at 12 o'clock in the night i got this particular offer for summer internship and then you know again i got back on track so that four more thing is going to happen that give up attitude is something that's going to creep in but then at this that that's what you know keeps you going as a, as a, as an mba student or as an aspirant you have to have that amount of you know self motivation in you which can you know keep you driving for for longer term because th there are some things which you will do in your first year there are some things which you will do during your internship which might not fetch you the desired results you know if you would have been looking at a ppo from say an internship perspective even if you work hard there are certain there are times when it does not work out but that doesn't mean that you'll you'll get bogged down because you know you still have one more lap to go that is your second year as well as your final placements so whatever efforts you put in in your first year as well as your second year obviously that will pay off but you will probably understand it once you are into the corporate industry that what things you know you did correct when you were doing your mba but you did not realize at that point of time having said that you know we, we also talked about the dossiers and the materials which these people will be getting from their colleges we will also we we i mean uh, there are there are some of my friends and we we have kind of assimilated a document for every specialization so that's like a do, uh, uh, like a guide book which we distributed last year also amongst uh, whoever was there as a part of calipur mentorship program and we will be distributing this year as well so it's like a transcript of the interviews of different companies your seniors would have sat in so it's like you know what all questions they were they, they had faced and how did they go about the different processes which they because some people like i personally sat for three companies during my summers first second and then third and third one clicked similarly you know people might have sit for four to five companies so they had shared all their experiences of different company which they sat for questions they were asked and ultimately what was the thing which you know kind of picked for them so those things we will be sending to you guys also so that you you kind of also get a reference from from those things you can take a leaf out of that book and probably do well in your summers okay so, so having said that i think i've discussed about my summers as well uh, it's it's just about you know the in in finance it's about 
you are, you have two 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 types of interviews you have either a hygiene round and then you have a technical round so hygiene round is basically questions like you know why mba why finance why that particular company which you are sitting for why that particular role so those kind of questions come into hygiene whereas your technical questions would be you know from from the point of you know asking basics about financial ratios a little bit about valuations you, in summers you'll not be questioned a lot on those technical skills but a little bit of basic financial analysis what you should definitely know like i said you know you'll you'll find your seniors who have been interned in that particular company so you'll be talking to your immediate seniors who are there in the second year once you get a shortlist for a company so reach out to them they'll tell you you know what kind of interview you can expect and i think that that's how you basically go on preparing for these uh, for these interviews yeah awesome awesome great uh, all right uh, so now i'm going to move on to a few questions okay. not from the chat box here but i think i'm going to move on to the whatsapp questions that you all had on the group so i think i'm going to start with hr specifically uh, right now so chirag i have uh, you know are there any public sector companies that uh, recruit mbhr students uh so what exactly happens is that public sector companies do hire from nmims but at the same time um, as you as it is a public sector company their requirements is not streamlined so maybe last year they they might not have come two years back if you check the placement report bpcl hpcl they might have hired a few hr folks so there if you go on linkedin and check bpcl hpcl you will find a lot of nmims alums they might have gone through you know external placements but uh, it is not certain that if you are joining it this year then uh, a public sector company is bound to you know come and hire all right uh, okay and one more question chirag uh, so the placement cell of an mba in hr and core is it different and if it is different then what are the disadvantages to that okay so there are no differences at all the placement committee caters to the both mba core and mba hr which happens to be the flagship courses of nmims mumbai there is no difference at all but yes if you are doing an hr course then you do have an advantage over the core people because you know you will be interacting with hrs day in day out and uh, believe me when i spoke to a lot of hrs they gave me insights about how to go about you know my uh, hygiene questions or maybe how i should go about my preparation or maybe a lot of uh, doubts which i had as to which function of hr is the best fit for me so it it is actually an add on and if you are in hr you should actually give it a shot because you know it really aligns with with your uh, candidature okay okay yeah, let's let's do one thing let's do one thing you you focus on the pdf questions and uh, kind of get two three questions on the top of your mind and then you can ask them by uh, while i mean at that point of time i'll just take up some questions from the live chat so that we are answering okay. both of them simultaneously okay. so i have kind of questions which i have in mind i've taken from the chat box so i'll just you know ask these questions so first first and foremost it's like the when does the hbs module start i think we have already answered it it will be in the month of june itself and uh, and here pawan and uh, chirag both were a part of placement cell whether pawan continued or not that's like a different thing but he was a part of it so there are questions on you know is it is it the most hectic from all other committees and you know what kind of work do these people are required to do so if you know both of you can throw some light on that and then when do these cvs freeze for the purpose of summer internships i mean when that entire process of you know freezing happens you kind of verifying the cvs when does this process freeze so chirag i'll go first based on yeah, yeah sure my experience with the committee so i was a part of the committee till the end of first year and for some personal reasons i did not do that yeah am i audible yes 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 yeah, yeah. okay uh, so yes uh, in terms of uh, there's no scale to measure which committee is high in terms of work or which committee doesn't give you much work so every committee has its own i would say good days and hectic days and if if i were to say placecom yeah it does have slightly higher number of hectic days but at the end of the day you're doing some good work towards the wellness of the college and as i would say this would be chirag's answer also you're not supposed to dive deeper into what the committee does and how the committee does mm -hmm. that, that that thing is something that you'll get to know once you step on campus but be rest assured that the work is quality and at the same time i doesn't give you any unfair advantage over people get get out of that misconception before you step into college 
Uh, but it, yeah, it does give you a different perspective to a B school journey. It definitely enriches your path to the summer internships or the final mm-hmm. cases. And yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I would say it doesn't give you any unfair advantage, and it's one of the good companies to work for on campus. Okay, there's there's one more thing which uh, about Placecom uh, I've kind of picked up from this chat is like, what about the Placecom politics? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you guys have to answer. I think Chirag probably you can uh, you know talk about this. Over to Chirag. <laughs> Over to Chirag. <laughs> Or maybe not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, there is no such thing as politics when it comes to the placement committee. It all depends on the kind of grit and consistent consistency which you put towards the committee, and in return you get to be a part of senior placement committee. Is as simple as that. It is that transactional. If you are working properly and if you are doing the tasks which are assigned to you, it does make you a lot proactive. Um, you get to see the placements from a different angle, from a different perspective. You get to see the HR side of the uh, placements, and yes, you do get to interact with a lot of business leaders, like um, as as. As a placement committee member, I hosted a session of the chief marketing officer of uh, Lenovo, and uh, you know I talked to him on WhatsApp day in day out. And you know if I have any doubt, I can reach out to him. So that is the kind of edge which you get uh, yeah. while you are there in the placement committee, but you do not get any edges uh, when it comes to the placements. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I think I'll ask one question to Pratyaksh. Yeah. Uh, in case of ops and analytics specialization, which courses should we focus on for now, and what all the to- what are the tools that you would suggest that it's required for analytics part of it? I would not suggest any courses, honestly, because when I came to NIT, I had done no courses myself, and. Uh, I wanted to go into ops, but slowly and steadily, on the first from the uh, after take first year through the NMMS, I started to understand that data analytics is something I was more interested in, and so I uh, I made my specialization as operations and data analytics. I I think I took at least six or seven subjects in the final year, which were on data analytics. So and honestly, I did not do any courses myself. If you do want to do courses, there are a lot of courses out there uh, on uh, uh, Coursera, and uh, there are many many different uh, websites where you can find courses online. But uh, I would, I I personally didn't do any courses. All right, and Pratyaksh, are there any e-commerce uh, ops, uh, you know, companies that visit our campus? Not that I remember. Of. I I remember Swiggy came to our campus with an ops role, but uh, I don't. For any uh, Amazon, also came for. It was not for ops, but I'm not sure about landscape right now. But during my time, I don't remember many e-commerce uh, companies coming in. Now it has increased. Yeah. Oh, so Chirag has come to the rescue. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Harsh. I think you can get back to the chat box. Yeah, I was just going to say. This <laughs> so, so there is a there's a question on. Uh, most of the finance aspirants would have this like is a cfa advisable to get into good companies in finance and somia let's let's bury this thing once and for all <laughs> whether cfa is advisable or not yes i had done cfa and without cfa but i prepared for cfa and that did help because during uh, when they ask you questions uh, they don't know that you have uh, given cfa or not but you prepared for it and you haven't cleared any levels of cfa and if you able to answer those questions they'll be like this is great but if you have given cfa and uh, they they'll ask you uh, the questions 1.5x times what uh, you have studied in cfa it's going to be really hard for that matter so i would suggest um, it's uh, not that necessary but if you want it in your cv uh, and it's really crucial for you then you can go for it but companies don't look for that that is my perspective uh, so may i had yeah. a question from one of the uh, students uh, that uh, can you mention on your cv that you're pursuing it or how does it work no 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 so uh, there there were people uh, who had given cfa and uh, uh, the, i think the place comp can suggest this better but we are not we were not allowed to put that we, are, we had given cfa because uh, before if you're giving cfa now and your result is supposed to be out in the month of july august uh, and before that your cv is freezed uh, you can't really put it in your cv saying that i was pursuing cfa or something because your results are not your not yet out you have to give cfa l1 cleared that should be the statement that should come in your cv so mm-hmm. 
I think there's there's one more question. I think I'll give it to everyone, like all the panelists, to answer. So, in in your respective specializations, what can a student do in these two months which they have at hand to kind of have like an upper hand when they join a college? So, with respect to certification, with respect to case competitions, I think Chirag, you'll be, you know, you'll be required to talk about what sort of opportunities are there in HR case competitions wise, or whether you know HR students can participate in uh, the case competitions which are launched by corporates for marketing students or finance students. So how does the scene work with respect to HR? And then I'll talk about you know other specializations also. Like how do you go about building a, like a good profile for the purpose of uh, being ready for the summers? So yeah, Chirag, you can start. Uh, talking about the case study competitions, uh, particularly I think the core people will have more than a hundred competitions to participate in, and uh, the HR people can also participate in many of the core competitions. See, we try to widen as a placement committee member. We try to widen up. the opportunities for people as much as possible so if the company which is uh, which has opened up maybe a marketing competition or maybe a finance competition uh, we try to have as many people participate as possible so if the hr folks are interested and if the company is okay with it we do not have any problem in opening it up for everybody so there are ample of opportunities for the enthusiasts who want to you know take part in the uh competitions and uh, talking particularly about these two months so yes i mean uh, talking to as many alums uh one advice which i would like to give everybody is that go on google figure out that how can you actually make your linkedin look more presentable because people are having all sorts of you know informal pictures and maybe irrelevant information on their linkedin so filter that out and you know make your linkedin look as good as possible because a lot of recruiters before shortlisting you they actually go on your linkedin and check how your linkedin id looks uh, because that is a public platform wherein they are able to see you you know in a very in a, in a better way how many connections do you have do you have a proper picture um, you know at least 60% of what you are going to put in your cv you should have that on linkedin ready for the recruiter to have a look and maybe you can get you know an external opportunities i myself have gotten a few external opportunities while i was studying an mba uh, because my linkedin was you know in proper shape harsh on mute harsh on mute sorry so yeah i mean just taking forward that point from chirag that linkedin you know the importance of linkedin so again i'll i'll kind of reiterate my experience with that because just like chirag you know i also got a couple of opportunities to you know a couple of job opportunities via linkedin because of my profile because i had you know maintained it from the very beginning of my uh, mba mba like life so there were companies like i'll specifically name a company which goes on your linkedin profile and it kind of has this particular you know uh, It, there in the in in its particular application form that you have to put in your linkedin profile link and it's kpmg so kpmg goes through your linkedin profile it checks how what kind of an appearance do you have whether you would kind of presentable or you're professional with respect to whatever however you maintain your accounts so i think kpmg was the one and because i got rejected from that company because my linkedin profile at that point of time when i just started i did not know how to maintain that so after that i kind of uh, started making my profile and in within 6 months i i got i got this chance of uh, i got a shortlist for linkedin mtv get a job so it's it was like you know amongst 50000 more than 50000 applicants i was among the top 5 with respect to my linkedin profiles so it was it was marked as you know one of the best profiles on on linkedin for for you know someone like me who's pursuing an mba in, in first year so i think it it really makes a lot of difference i kind of went for a brand marketing internship you will hardly get brand marketing internships on any kind of colleges whether it's like a top notch college even i am amdavad you don't get brand marketing internships from the very beginning it's like your internships are very generic you know, sales internships but i was getting an opportunity at reliance agio for a brand marketing internship through that particular thing so linkedin gives you a lot of opportunities so kind of go through it there are lots of tutorials on the website plus we will be also taking sessions on you how do you create like a personal brand on linkedin so do stay tuned to this particular channel and probably we'll make your mba life very very easy that's what you know the the purpose is okay having having talked about it there are there are certain things which uh, you know finance people operations people and marketing people also have to do for the purpose of their you know strengthening their profile so one by one i'll just go to uh, first we can start with pratyaksh for op ops and data analytics and post that we can go to pawan and somesh yeah uh, about the profile i think already uh, harsh and chirag has already covered nicely be be very good with linkedin profiles and uh, honestly i don't think there is anything you need to do from now uh, my only question would be why do you want to be so focused on competitions uh, once they will begin you will uh, get into it the flow will you will get into the flow and uh, you will uh, once the competition comes to you you can 
start working on them. I don't think there is anything you need to do before even the college starts for any competition if you want to prepare for them. But I would say even even that being said, even if you want to still prepare something, uh, you can look up look up some competitions. Maybe have dummy competitions and try to work your way. Uh, try to understand what what would be your thought process for a, part, a particular competition. Um, and yeah, one one more thing you can do is be very good with guesstimates. Uh, that's something I was very lacking in my first year. Uh, so at a lot of places you will find that you need some numbers, but there is nowhere you don't get the actual data for that number. So you can, uh, they don't want the exact number, If but if you can give them a logic, let's say uh, the population of India is this much and out of that the percentage of population in Gujarat is this much and maybe do, do some number from that and uh, give them a proper guesstimate, that will be much better than giving them the actual data. So the uh, competitors generally look at the thought process. Uh, generally, it depends on the competition as well. But uh, if you want, you can hone your skills at guesstimates. Uh, that's my that's two cents from me. That's actually a very good point because uh, one thing I remember from this from this guesstimate part is you know EY uh, when I sat for this EY process. So there was a question which I was asked. You know how many. Uh, how, how much potatoes are used in one particular day uh, in all the outlets in Mumbai for McDonald's? And you know you kind of had to give like an estimate of how many people firstly visit the visit McDonald's store on on a daily basis. How many outlets are there? And with respect to the fries, when when you get a small fry or a medium fry or, or uh, you know kind of large fries, how much does uh, how much potato does go into that particular you know that box which you get? So that estimate or guesstimate you had to kind of give in that particular interview. You were given a pen and a paper, like I was given a pen and a paper and we had to kind of estimate. What they were looking for is not the number. Like, you know, if, if, if suppose, for example, I consider only 100 people visited, say, all the McDonald's outlets, just for the purpose of representation, say 100 people visited McDonald's and um, considering like an average of, say, one kg of potato was gone into their fries, respective fries, then it comes to like 100 kgs of potatoes you would require for your fries. But that's not the, what the answer is. The answer is when you kind of fry the potatoes, there is some shrinkage which happens. So if you fry, say, one kg of potatoes, the output which you get would be not more than 800 grams of fries or, say, 850 grams of fries. This 15% spoilage that happened is what they were looking for, you know, whether your mind goes into these particular things. Because as a consultant, as a management consultant, you have to think from those lines, you know. It's not just uh, something which anyone can think from. If suppose I give this particular question to anyone, this basic answer everyone would give this is but thinking from this spoilage perspective or this, this, you know, hardly people will think from it, this perspective. So if you have this sort of an approach when you are appearing for your consulting interviews, you, you'll ace them without a doubt. Yeah, Pawan. Yep, now coming to, of course, after all the LinkedIn and other, uh, what do you call, suggestions that people have given you, uh, specific to marketing, if you're actually very clear that marketing is something that you want to do, then start getting a little hands-on in terms of digital marketing, I would say. Uh, do the Google uh, Analytics Wala course, which is free for a beginner. And after that, maybe you can start looking at Coursera and Udemy, whatever courses are there. And uh, I feel, uh, Chirak, correct me if I'm wrong, these guys will be given free access to Coursera and Udemy also, right? Once they join NMIS. Yes, they do. Uh, we have a tie up with Coursera. So you do ah, get perfect. like two to three months of online courses. So don't wow, spill a lot of money. Yeah. Wow, this, this this we didn't have. <laughs> we didn't have this. There is one more talk which these students are getting this year is like a free laptop. I I was shocked when I like Are they getting that? That's what I heard. Wow. That they're getting a laptop also. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Ah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. It must be part um, of the fees. <laughs> I yeah, think we yeah, need to yeah, ask them really questions cool. now. <laughs> so now that you guys will be having access to courses, don't spill a lot of money. Uh, once your college starts, you will be given access to Coursera. Till then, do all the free courses wherever they are in terms of digital marketing. I'm saying this because even those people who go into hardcore sales wala internships, I mean, uh, companies like ITC, Pidilai, Dabur, Marico, even some projects end up getting, some people end up getting projects of digital marketing in some ways. 
it's i can give you a live example of my one of our batchmates who got a digital marketing project in pidilite and she ended up getting a ppo and she's now in the digital marketing division of pidilite so sometimes you can get lucky and some it's just that you need to be ready for whatever is coming your way be it digital marketing be it sales marketing marketing internships are as random as it gets mine for my personally my summer internship was more related to sales it was completely process improvement more of a operations or a consulting type of an internship but end of the day i am doing sales after starting my career here that to proper rural sales which is the <laughs> epitome of how worse it can get but yeah to begin the career we are doing that and don't expect brand management or b2b marketing roles to begin with uh, that is I, as honest as it gets not many i mean there are one or two companies like ibm or uh, one other it company that offers b2b straight away but no other company will offer you proper marketing or brand management roles in your internships and product management also uh, if you are someone who's inclined towards it you would be knowing that it's a role that it's a role that requires longevity so you won't see internships uh, offering you product management role but there are a lot of uh, finals i mean companies that come in finals that offer product management role and that to good ones uh, across all verticals so product management is one of the most sought after profiles in finals but not in summers so summer internship try to get your hands dirty as much as you can and uh, don't expect uh, brand management or high five marketing roles it's properly sales uh pawan one, uh, one one question i have when you mentioned about product product management which companies generally come with product management role is it like it companies or you have fmcg companies or you have you know fintech companies which kind of companies come with product management role because i i personally don't know in our time which company came like a good company which came for a product management role a few that i can recollect idfc first bank came for product management role and uh, there was cisco that came for product management for product role management i am sure chirag can throw a light on few more companies it's predominantly it but there are companies from financial services edelweiss came for a product management role during that and so there are a lot of lovely companies and lovely packages to be very honest these were some of the highest packages that uh, people saw in finals and one very good example i would like to give one of my friends one of my classmates he was in the last five people of the batch to get summer internship he got placed with idfc product management with a package of 20 lakhs so <laughs> as beautiful as it gets the final placement scene it's just that don't get demoralized even if your summers don't go well there are examples i'm sure chirag can highlight a few more of people who didn't know did nothing i mean nothing substantial in summers but ended up touching the sky in finals and there are people the, with the reverse also people who did internship with idc who ended up working for so <laughs> focus on your No, but that's very true. That that has happened even in finance. Like there were people who didn't get placed, you know, in the day zero, day one, and they were waiting for four, five months. But when you know there are some real good companies which came later. I think I I don't really remember those two particular companies which had like fantastic packages and profiles I'll as you, well. I'll give the, I'll give this example. So basically, I'll give you two types of examples. One is for the person who did not secure a summer internship at all. because most of you would have such questions you know that nma do you get like a summer internship 100% or you know there are some people who kind of feel left out so there was a friend of mine i'll not name him but you know these people will be knowing him if they have gone through his profile he did not get a summer internship in my batch did not get a summer internship so he worked like a for a free type for a you know for a free he worked for a company just because he had to put it in his cv in finals he got placed with goldman ib and currently he is in london in 2 years he is in london front end ib and a person who did not secure a summer internship has a package of more than 60 lakhs in indian currency adjusted with inflation in within 2 years so it's it's possible and then there is an example of uh, of a person who was a senior to us like one year senior there's a company called dsp blackrock you know most of the finance companies uh, finance person will be relating to it finance aspirants it's a fantastic company to enter into like a dream company for even people studying at iim ahmedabad and it mostly you know visits colleges from ivy league colleges like you know abc not not below that it had visited nm in our senior in, in uh, you know one one batch senior there was a person in their batch who was unplaced for the 2 3 months of this entire process that had happened and he was the only person left in finance 
DSP BlackRock was the last company to visit the campus, and he got a package. I, I'll not get into the package, but the role that person got. He's currently in New York, in within three years, and and he's managing like a a fund of say five billion dollars in a team of two. So you know, from NM people have kind of done well, even though they have things might not have gone in in the first part of your internship or your finals. Things might not have gone your way, but you know, it doesn't take time for you know tables to turn. So always keep yourself. That's that's the most important thing I said. You know, in the very in the very beginning, that self motivation kind of drives you throughout your MBA. Either your peers, as in your friends, will drive you. They'll kind of keep you pushing towards you know achievement of whatever you have decided, or you have to do it yourself. So there's no you know sec- other way out. Yeah, Lila. Yeah, again, that, that's very true. You know, don't stress so much on placements because I think around eighty percent of the people leave their first job. Eighty percent of MBAs leave their first job in like a year. Like, look at now, Somya is in a new job. I'm in Canada, like completely different you know, profile. Harsh has left his job. You know, so it's it's don't like now when we look back those PPOs and the stress that we took, it's not really worth it. Just enjoy the entire process because y'all won't get these two years back. All right. Yours uh, is so, a different fairy tale, Leela. All the <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, but anyone. Okay, okay. Let's get to the topic. <laughs> I think there's one, there's one thing which uh, I think Somya has left with respect to you know uh, the profiles. How to send in the profile in finance? Oh, yeah, so yeah, Somya. Yeah. Yeah, so with respect to finance, I think uh, Pratyash and Pawan, whatever they mentioned with respect to the uh, LinkedIn profile, I think you should uh, keep it up to date and uh, try to make it as enhanced as possible because there are companies which uh, look into your profiles and uh, they don't even mention like before they come for selecting you, they do look into your profiles. So if you're still not left your job, if possible, you can ask for recommendation to your. Um, uh senior vps because i had done that uh somebody in my front end had recommended me and he had written some few lines about uh, my work and that did help me because i got to know uh, somebody from jp morgan had seen my profile and uh, when uh, the, the, they had actually allocated buddies and that buddy had actually seen my profile and based on that um, my interview went along the lines it was supposed to because they had, i knew that they had seen my profile and they asked me questions on all those lines so that helps a lot so if possible um as because i had done a lot of automation projects um because i was working in a banking firm but i had done a lot of it work as well so with respect to automation jp morgan also was looking for it and uh, that uh, that is something which they wanted apart from investment banking if we could work on that and i could talk about it and that is something that they like changed the table completely so that uh, uh, i think uh, uh, that is where you are going to make an impact linkedin is very important guys and uh, like pratyaksh and harsh was mentioning the estimates applies for finance as well not just consulting and marketing uh, uh, because uh, they were going to see uh, sorry you somebody sorry. was talking i think harsh just mute I- Okay, uh, so as I was saying, uh, guesstimates is important finance as well. We want to see how your line of thought is, and like Harsh mentioned, something that they are looking for, and you you will just go along the general lines, and you you won't know what they are looking for. So just speak your mind out, like I mentioned before, how to pre- prepare for uh, finance companies. Uh, um, you need to write down which particular role you're looking for first of all if you're interested in finance see the companies that are coming i think chira can give you more light on that i'm not sure about it but uh, just uh, see which roles are coming to colleges uh, uh, be it in this banking uh, risk management um, financial analyst um, there are a lot of profiles that come and i think you can opt from that you know, the, the people do do cfa and frm but uh, i don't think you need to be too concerned about that to upgrade your cv if you know stuff and you're able to answer during your interview that's all that matters so that is something uh, first you need to do you need to look at what roles you're looking for which companies come and based on that you can be prepared with it make an excel sheet um, uh, uh, as to which are your preferences uh, you need to short shortlist that uh, that is that is another important thing prepare your hygiene well uh, even in finance companies they, they i mean the the standard question of why this company or why this role still applies uh, that would not change so you need to if you are preparing for which role you are interested in you will obviously know that and be prepared with those answers i have prepared a word doc a dossier of my own uh, before uh, sitting for internship 
So I knew what answer I was giving. I was confident in answering that. Um, and uh, that is what the company is looking for. They want to know whether you're sure you want to get into that particular role or not. Because IB, for, I can speak for Hush, and myself is not going to be a, a, a bed of roses for you. So um, I mean, uh, you need to be prepared with the workers and the culture of companies. And um, you know, you need to know that IB is not that easy. So they will be asking those kind of questions. Uh, Preparation from a technical point of view, like I mentioned before, uh, I think you, if you read through those visual notes in CFA, uh, um, for engineers, they will be asking um, ratio related questions, which which would be easy. But you need to uh, not answer, like give a number to that. You need to provide an analysis to that as to why uh, if your uh, inventory payables are increasing or why is the receivables are decreasing, what is the impact to the company? So those are the questions that matters. Um, uh, I think uh, for BCom people, uh, Leela can answer better because um, corporate finance is something which they would be very particular on most of the companies. Uh, so you need to be prepared with that subject. So these are two important things, accounting uh, and uh, corporate are the two major things that they'd be looking for, be it any company. So uh, these are the two technical things that you need to be focused. Dossiers do give you um, questions and you, you can prepare according to that because in a uh, phenomenon we had prepared questions for that i can i think uh, future batches also could have been the same so you need to be prepared with uh, those two uh, subjects it's really important during your interview processes um uh, let me like uh, off finance you can there are other things like fintech and it in finance and those are the things that uh, you can prepare for financial consulting is another important thing we had a subject in our second year which ui was taking and uh, that's a really helpful subject guys and financial consulting and we had we directly had partners coming and uh, talking to us so and taking the classes and Lira, i think harsh also might have taken yes, uh, Lira yes. and Hush. so yeah so yeah. that is some that is a very good subject in your second year do take that subject up and there's a chance of getting a ppo um i'm not going to tell how many people converted i'm I think uh, it might be demotivating, but uh, um, but you need to uh, speak up over there. There again, there will be interaction sessions. So the partner needs to know that you exist. Um, mm -hmm. So financial consulting is an important, it's a very good role that you can go for if, uh, if not those coveted roles of IB and asset management. So, so these are the few things like you know, Ash. So the thing that you mentioned about EY, and th there are certain other courses which are taken by corporates. If I remember, digital marketing is taken by you know people from Google, cool. Cool. and yeah. similarly, I think, I think infrastructure advisory is taken by KPMG or there's this one uh, corporate which takes infrastructure yeah. advisory course. I think so in your second, management uh, consulting is taken by. I don't I remember. Accent. I was there, but Benoit I don't and KPMG do take both the companies uh, take which projects I don't remember. And I think someone asked, what is the advantage of Dean's List, right? So if you have only a good CGPA, that's when you get uh, to take these electives, all right? So you need to yeah. know every elective in the second year has a CGPA or GPA. Like you need to be like a minimum of particular thing to get that particular subject. So that okay. is important. Let's uh, quickly, I mean, I will, I'll do one thing. I'll display these questions on the screen. So one by one, if you can take the question, Leela, and, and uh, the panelists can answer, that will be fine. So let's do like a rapid fire for, from this live chat. So the first question is front-end consulting rules. Is it available at NM? <laughs> I think Chirag. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, anyone, yeah. anyone. But I mean, I'd. Yeah. Uh, we do see front-end consulting rules, but they are very few. So if you are hellbent on no, I will only go for a front-end consulting role, then uh, get your facts. It's, they, there are not many front-end consulting roles, but there are a lot of consulting roles. There are beautiful pro profiles, beautiful opportunities, beautiful packages. But yes, if you are fixated on the front-end consulting role, then you should you know, start looking out <laughs> uh, from outside only. And, and I think you can always enter the company and like Harsh said, right? You can always get an opportunity within. If you're if you're going to be a great performer, then then obviously you can convert yourself into a front end role. So yeah. What's the scope of an MBA in business analytics? Any so there's one that's actually a new course. New course, yeah, yeah. Which has started this year only. So how can we comment on how it is going to be if it if this is going to be the first batch? No, actually, it started last year. There's a friend of mine who's already in there, but it's like their second uh, year is basically into Purdue University abroad. But because of COVID, it could not happen, so we can't shed light on on that particular aspect. Okay, Harsh, next question is, is BSA. 
that one is dsa that's another another course this course started okay. this year okay this one is okay okay got it <laughs> this yeah. confusion with this there are two of them are there summer internships for consulting if yes what should profile look like for a fresher engineer i think consulting we've already taken the question you know kind of have lesser opportunities but uh, you have to have you have to be good in decision making and guesstimates i guess so i, I think there's one question from the pdf which i'll ask pavan and somya because it's specific how does workex and it help for job profiles like fin analytics or even marketing analytics if you all could just throw some light yeah yeah so uh so basically it what we did in um, uh, i think analytics is very important when you have done an it subject i think when you uh, when you code in sas as sql r python it would make it easier for you because you already have that kind of an experience uh, so people who are looking for that there are a lot of financial analytics companies that come for it um, even those banking companies come for fin analytics uh, i had done that like, I, i was part of fin analytics when i was uh, working for hsbc for 2 years um and uh, that experience uh, did help me when um, if it's not for fin analytics companies i didn't sit for that because i directly got in jp morgan uh, it did help me in automation and other things so uh, data is there everywhere guys finance marketing everywhere so fin and marketing analytics will be useful for I- people who have it experience i mean you need to know these these languages as sql r python uh, there's a question I think Pawan can add some more. Yeah. Uh, so, as I said, she already mentioned that if you have by chance worked on any uh, CRM tool like Power BI or SAP, or at the same time worked on any of these scripting languages like R, Python, or if it's SQL and uh, SAS, then bonus. Uh, but most of the companies these days are migrating to Power BI or SAP for their internal uh, functioning. Yeah. so if you have power bi ka experience then nothing like it if even if you don't have don't worry about it it's just very simple to grasp once you get the coursera access do a course on power bi or something like that and you are good to go for all your it interviews and be very thorough with your profile whatever you did back then if you did something be very thorough about it even if you were like on bench for one and half to two years and that is what your experience is then Ex- uh, speak out something. I mean, if you must have had some training, right? Create some fake project related to the training which you had and express it out nicely. Uh, be in a very structured manner and be very clear about what your role in the project was. Uh, that is one thing that uh, these companies like GE and EY focus uh, very nicely on your role in that project and how did you take it to the next level? Questions like that. Be ready for that and I'm sure you're good to go after that. right right thank you so much pavan in fact here when he said ge i like to just you know uh, speak about my experience so when i sat for one of the very known companies uh, at nm uh, the day zero day one companies whichever came uh, the one thing so i have a business back in india and i pretty much was there in it and i have mentioned it on my cv and that didn't work well for me with that big good company which i was really hoping for because the location was where i wanted to be mumbai right and it didn't work like they were just against my business they were against the fact that you know i might just go back to business leave their company and so on and so forth so it didn't work for, work well for me so i was really dejected but the next day i had g interview and g completely took it in the opposite way for them it was like oh my god you know entrepreneurial experience wow that's it and then they kind of tried to understand what i did there what i did different and that's what helped me so every company is different and you need to kind of you know uh, maybe one company decision should not be the basis for your next company interview is one uh, advice from my end so yeah. yeah let's let's get into this question on uh, you know uh, this is a question to chirag can we get hr roles if we take mba core i understand that we I can't get covered that i don't think there's an overlap between core and hr if you are an hr you can only sit for hr companies and i think i think vice versa is the case Yeah, yeah. See, actually, on, if yeah. you are uh, taking an MBA core program, and if you are inclined towards HR, why don't you just go into MBA HR first of all? But yes, if you are taking an MBA core program, you cannot sit in for the HR companies. And outside campus, it is not very easy. It's not a bed of roses that you will go outside the campus placements, you know, and you straight off you will get a lot of offers. It's not like that. Any kind of placements after MBA takes up the process itself takes up around four to five months. 
so uh, you know 10 years down the line if you are a subject matter expert in the field which you are growing your career in and then you want to switch to a talent acquisition if your company allows you to do that that that's the easiest way of switching to hr maybe 5 years 7 years 10 years down the line but straight out of mba it's not that easy to do so okay okay pawan this question yeah but there are one or two companies from uh, that is positive moves and at the same time michael page that open up roles to marketing people sometimes uh, so that is the closest you can get to hr uh, work in a marketing vertical of a hr firm uh, that is as close as it gets and nothing else you can't go into core hr uh, profiles and uh, yeah now uh, can i take this question to people with two plus years of work experience yeah, that's, that's yeah. What i was saying yeah. yeah i i am one of these people i came with a work experience of 28 months which is close to two and a half years and uh, trust me i had no issues with the shortlist uh, in the first week i had seven shortlists so that was no where a problem and uh, they they you'll hear rumors ki itc se freshers ko leti hai uh, marico se freshers ko shortlist deti hai trust me when i say this one of my friends with 41 months of work experience got into itc on day zero and shortlists are completely random it's nothing in your hands you just go go in there with an open outlook and once you get a shortlist you convert it that's it don't fuck up five to six shortlists like me just get the first ones okay let's take one uh, kind of easy easy going question on what, which are the best places to <laughs> i love this question you've already started enjoying mba <laughs> marine drive bandstand close to uh, nmi my overall is the best so everything is good about yeah, it yeah that is there that is there uh, if you are a beach lover then clo- closest to college we have silver beach which is like peaceful and amazing don't go to juhu chopati it's very crowded and it will start changing your opinion about mumbai you go to silver beach first which is very pretty and very secluded and then if you want to travel a little further you can go to bandstand uh, or just opposite to manat it's like one of the most prettiest and most beautiful places to be in mumbai and then marine drive obviously these are the beach destinations that i would recommend Of course, Leela is from Mumbai. She can recommend better places. No, no, nothing. Uh, just uh, he's right. And even Prithvi Cafe, I think, will be the adda for mostly all animites. And even Grand Mama's Cafe and all the possible. There are a lot of places in Juhu, Parla, which you know, you all can go and chill. But of course, I don't know when. Uh, hopefully soon. So, okay. This, yeah. This yeah, I do. Very focused on IT operations. So I think Pratyaksh can probably take this question. Pratyaksh. Uh, case studies in competitions to. as for a person i interested in it uh committee would be optimus a straight forward answer i would say it consultant of management for e-commerce companies uh case studies to focus on i do not remember any particular case studies because case studies are very random uh, they uh, every every year you will find different 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 case studies to look forward for Uh, i don't have a particular answer for this you can just look for look uh, look ahead for them and uh, try to try to participate in as many case studies as possible uh, Actually, right so in fact i in fact i in fact, okay right in fact i think in terms of case study competitions especially if it's like a business model kind of a thing you can always have a mix you know someone from ops someone from finance someone from marketing because everyone is a sme of their particular specialization right so you all can still go in for marketing finance competitions and you know if it's a kind of a business overall business competition and try and learn all the aspects of it yeah your voice thoda sa break ho raha hai thoda sa just kind of remove this microphone a little bit yeah Okay, so for IT, I guess there are a couple of competitions. I don't know whether it opens for NM. Probably, uh, I think Chirag would be the best person to answer if it opened for NM this year. So I think Flipkart is there with respect to IT focus, and also Amazon Ace Customer Challenge is there. Apart from that, you have Cummins Redefine, and there there was one very good competition which was in uh, Mahindra War Room. I I guess it stopped last year. I don't know the reason behind it. I think again, Pawan and uh, Chirag can throw some light on it. But it was a fantastic competition for business. management people and plus you you kind of got ppis and ppos for mahindra's gmc program which is again one of the most coveted programs for any kind of a, i mean student from all specializations i think chirag and pawan if you can throw some light on some case study competition which are relevant 
and which have opened for NMD in the past couple of years. Pavan, would you like to go first or should I? Uh, you are the place <laughs> cover and manager. <laughs> you, the right you can give an insider's so, uh, perspective also. Guys, uh, you know, every year corporates come up with different kind of cases. So it is not mandatory that, you know, a person who is, uh, you know, intending to be a product manager or a program manager. So a company would be opening a role of that sort. But then at the same time, you should always subscribe to uh, the D2C and Inside IAM. These are the two portals on which they uh, come up with all the prod man and project management kind of all, all the competitions. So a piece of advice for you, go back, look what are the competitions which have happened in the past. You can connect with the winners of those competitions who are from NMIMS and you can talk to them and they will give you a better idea about how to go about it. If that is something, you know, it is really specific to somebody who is inclined to a particular, uh, you know, specialization. So that is what you can possibly do. There are, uh, you can also go to the corporate relations page of NMIMS. You can go on the Facebook page or maybe Instagram page over there. What all competition winners are there? They are being displayed with their names on. So you can just go and, you know, talk to them over there and they'll guide you better on this front. Okay. Okay. The next next question from Saurabh is like the whole program for last year's batch, the batch which joined last year was online. So did this have any impact on them with respect to the learning as well as placements or anything? Again, Pawan and Chirag. We just got out. I mean, the lockdown started on 23rd of March and we uh, came out of Mumbai on 16th of March. That was the last day of our MBA. So we had a completely offline MBA. So <laughs> Chirag <laughs> is the best person to answer this. So we came out on twenty uh, first of March on the day of lockdown, and uh, you know I had become a senior committee member at that particular point. On that day itself, I was the senior committee member, and within uh, two weeks, we saw around two hundred people getting their offers revoked for the summer internships. <laughs> so <laughs> we were uh, going through our own internships, and while doing so, we were getting them another offer parallelly so by the grace of god everybody got a good offer and luckily people who got their offers revoked also got ppos from the new companies where they interned in so uh, i would say that uh, the placements did not suffer at all if you compare it with you know the 2020 batch it was at par uh, there were really new uh, you know good profiles and new companies who visited you will get to see it soon maybe another two and a half weeks or so uh, you will get to see the new placement report uh, and uh, about the online program, so since you know your classes are going to be on Zoom, so there is a lot of procrastination which is going to creep in. So be very cognizant of the fact that you know this is how it's going to be. Because if I talk about myself, there was a lot of procrastination which was going on while attending the classes. But if you look at it from this perspective, that I will join my job soon and I will be joining it virtually. And it is going to be virtual indefinitely till this COVID pandemic sorts out. So this is the way to go forward. And you know how soon you adapt to it uh, is going to, you know, give you the most benefit out of it. You're on mute, Harsh. <laughs> 30 months of experience and IT disadvantage. What do you think? Swamya, are you there? Swamya, uh, you are on mute, mute. Sir, your voice is breaking. I could not hear that. So I, I asked, is 30 months of work experience in IT a disadvantage for finance? That's what a question. So oh, no, not at all. I, I, I had 24 months in uh, a banking firm firm itself uh, so uh, that and I my work was again uh, more or less towards IT side itself I was more into web development and analytics so that way it wasn't much of it didn't make much of a difference and uh, like Pawan had mentioned somebody with 41 years of experience going into sales uh, I think that is more hard than getting into finance with uh, 36 months of experience so I think that yeah. wouldn't make a difference in fact it's a good thing because you have more uh, Okay, one thing, uh, there are certain companies while selecting, like for example, uh, GS for instance, would, uh, does look for certain sec specific sectors like um, 
uh, investment banking they are looking they look only for uh, ones with freshers but um, other than that i won't say uh, all companies do that for certain companies i'm not sure why they are very particular that they look for freshers but most of the companies look for a good amount of experience and if you have 3 years of experience you have a lot of insights you have a lot of focus in finances like the the more the experience the better it is up to 4 years i would say so that way you won't have to worry about it okay okay so this this is question from neelam for the people who don't have an experience in hr rather have it in financial roles is it difficult to get placed or something related to hr that could be done in these two months for addition to cv i think neelam is an hr aspirant i guess so Chirabi, yeah so there can... are a lot of uh, hr companies in the bfsi sector uh, the banking financial services and insurance sector so these kind of companies would be interested in uh, people who are having a similar profile as yours so don't be worried at all since you have work experience it is going to complement when you are going to apply in such companies because you already know that how these companies function uh, about uh, the hr courses you can look up online we'll also uh, share a few courses which you can do before you can join your mba mm -hmm. you just need to have a basic idea about the different functions of hr before joining the college and i think that would be enough for you at this point of time okay thank you pratyaksh okay some top companies in operations i think pratyaksh if you can throw some light on this some top companies i uh, i can tell you the companies that came during my time asian paints abfrl uh, then uh, fedex definitely and then um, th there was the credies as well which came during my time but i am really not sure which are these companies which still come in because every year there is a Uh, turn out of some companies, some new companies, and some new companies not coming in. I think LNT is also. Uh, I'm not sure if if they still come in as of now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. that's. Okay, thank. I guess uh, in operations, in operations, I think the best company I would say it's Asian Paint. If if Chirag and yes. uh, Pawan, if you have like, any different views, if you can. Maybe you just share it, I, but otherwise, I think it's Asian Paints is the best when it comes to operations. Or oh, Honeywell is also there. Honeywell, does Honeywell right, right, Honeywell. Oh, okay. I have one of the questions from the PDF, which yeah. uh, says, "What are the most sought-after companies to look for in marketing?" And, and second is brand, uh, brand uh, roles, brand marketing roles, if there are any. Okay. So. Uh, Pavan. Uh, Pavan. so most sort of the companies uh, and the uh, companies that pay you the most also on campus it's itc marico dabur uh, and uh, johnson and johnson uh, craft hines also came to a batch and the company that yours truly works for pedilight and uh, asian paints uh, this castrol this pepsi sometimes even coca cola comes a lot of lovely companies come in, come, on, come on campus in the first week and if you get into one of them then there's a high chance of a ppo first thing and the quality of the internship is so good that it's going to be memorable and it's going to be helpful to you no matter you get the ppo or not. so these are the companies that you should be targeting for and at the same time if you are from an it background there are companies like general electric uh, there's reliance which comes for a general management role which is again one of the most sought after and then there's cisco uh, companies like cisco uh, companies like sap companies like uh, salesforce so big big brands most of them shell comes or comes for a good role and then one other company i forgot yeah general electric sorry <laughs> yeah these are the companies i think you missed out good i think you missed out two names for one one is google which comes for digital marketing and one is microsoft <laughs> fuck like yes brand. microsoft yeah 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 <laughs> Microsoft Basically, there are lots of companies actually for marketing. I think marketing has great number of companies for on and. Similarly, if we can, if we can just talk about say finance also because we are covering ops marketing, let's just talk about also finance. So options are, I think Goldman, J P, Credit Suisse, Bank of America, Bloomberg, 
then you have some like uh, you have a lot of commercial banks so hdfc bank icici bank idfc bank as pawan had mentioned earlier and then apart from that if you go into you know very niche profiles then you have trust vista which comes with its financial analyst role then you have d shaw big four companies so kpmg ey pwc so you have a lot of options with respect to that if you talk about the different verticals which you will get in your you know in your finals as well as your summers so you have like you know either you get non banking roles or you get banking roles non banking roles are the roles like corporate finance you know leela can talk about corporate finance and banking roles are like investment banking kind of deal advisory roles and it more so client facing whereas corporate finance i'll, I'll leave it to leela yeah so if you all see yourself you know uh, uh, liking the financial statements forecasting you all like to budget stuff you all like to analyze those numbers then fpna and if you all see yourselves being maybe the cfo going forward 5 10 years down the line then i think fpna roles are really good corfin roles are very good so make sure that even if you all don't know about it like read up and you know because different or uh, different companies have different names to the jds but the work is like pretty much corfin and fpna so i think that's that that's a great value add for uh, finance people in fact what i did as even in the leadership program was mainly fpna role financial planning and analysis so that was good and uh, uh, so yeah i think that's all for my end. yeah i think uh, someone is asking that uh, do google microsoft look for experienced people so i can talk about microsoft because one of my friends got recruited this year so microsoft had a hard stop at 44 or 34 months of work experience i'm not really sure about the number but it's either 34 or 44 so you had to have more work experience than this number so either 34 or 44 so you have to have at least 2 years plus experience for microsoft for google i'm not really sure so google you have to look up to you know one of your seniors who might be there okay there is one more question from shrijit how many people do top companies recruit and how many do these companies interview normal conversion rate so yeah i mean shortlisting processes if you can talk about the processes pawan and chiran somya uh, so, uh, companies like, uh, uh, I'll give you an example of ITC and Pidelite. Uh, so, yeah. ITC, these companies at least 350 to 400 people apply, for sure. I mean, all the marketing guys, they have to apply. Uh, so, out of this, first there's a written test and then there's a psychometric test. Uh, so, after these two tests, around half the people are filtered out. Uh, so, from that half, then there are these GDs and case competitions. Uh, the GDs, at, uh, for a group, there are 10 to 12 people in the need GD. And from GDs, after the GD round, there are around 25 to 30 people filtered out uh, for the interview process. And from that, they pick uh, around ITC pick 6 to 8 people. Uh, Pedalite slightly has a higher interview base. In our batch, they pick 20 people, but even they are reducing going forward. Uh, for the junior batch, they pick just 6 to 7 people. Chira, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so companies are True. reducing the numbers, but FMCGs it's somewhere between five to ten, based on their requirement. So I'll be talking about the top companies and the sectors, not particularly the companies. So if we talk about BFSI, the top four to five companies which will come to the campus will have a hefty number in mind to pick up. Uh, if we talk about FMCG, you can have an average of five companies per, uh, you know. Per company, five interns you can look at. If you talk about the top IT companies, which will come, you know, uh, when I say top companies, it means that which is coming on maybe the first day or maybe the second day of the placement, so maybe a day zero or something of that sort. So uh, talking about an IT company, they'll pick up max to max three to four people, the top three to four IT companies. So that is uh, kind of the conversion rate. So it is not really very easy to crack those companies if you are not, you know, uh, if your profile is not really aligned with what they are looking for. And you should be really clear about why you want to actually join that company. So that is one question which you should ask yourself before even applying to the company that why and how exactly is my profile a good fit for this company and the role which the company is offering. You're on mute, Harsh. Sorry. So I, I, I was just, you know, talking about, you know, different companies in finance. So Swami, if you can throw some light on how many companies, how many students do these companies recruit for summers or for, for finals? Uh, uh, like you mentioned, uh, for, for uh, banking and BFSI, uh, if you're looking for the retail banking, corporate banking kind of roles, uh, there are a lot of, even risk management for that matter, uh, they'll hire like 15 to 20 people. I mean, at least in our batch, HDFC, ICICI, and those kind of companies had hired like 
for different kind of roles. They had hired around 30, 35 people. It's, uh, it's not a mass recruitment because it was not for a particular role. It was across roles of five, six roles that come for. Same applies for uh, uh, companies like GS and stuff. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, specific to roles like IB, uh, they're very, uh, I mean, it's very restricted. Uh, there are only like three, four people who gets, uh, who get hired. So uh, that is the, that has been the trend in our batch. I'm sure it would be the same across now. Um, um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for a um, retail banking sort of role, and you'll get, uh, you'll get into these HDFC and uh, ICSA bank kind of companies, the only one. And if you see okay. the past strength as well, uh, I, I think uh, what has been across the trend has been like the finance, the number has been less. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way, even if less companies come, finance get uh, get hired really fast. I think they're done with placements really fast. I'm sure it yeah. would have been the trend last year as well. Uh, because the number, uh, the strength is kind of low and the comp there are good amount of companies that Placecom gets for finance. I think you missed out one company, know. which is which is like a mass recruiter for finance students. And uh, if you are unplaced and if you're kind of looking for a placement, Deloitte is like a yeah, mass yeah. recruiter. <laughs> it comes to your rescue yeah. every now and then. So, so kind of look at Deloitte rules. Okay. Uh, I mean, no, talked about, I think, yeah, Deloitte, Deloitte does offer like, I think it hires around 40, 50 people also. So it's like a quite, yeah. quite a number when it comes to, you know, people who get recruited there. Okay. Three things which people look at with respect to placements at a B school: brand, money, and profile. So I would ask from all four of you who are there. Pratyaksh has dropped because of some internet issues. For you guys, what would be of the paramount importance for all four of you? And I mean, just rank them based on your importance. Firstly, for summers, and then for finals. So I'll start with Chirag. Brand, money, and sorry, brand, money, profile. And Profile. Profile. Kind okay. Of good uh, so for me, the priorities did change. In summers, I was uh, definitely looking at the profile, then money, then brand. But in while I was sitting in for my finals, it completely changed to uh, first brand, then profile, then money. Because money, it does not matter at all. Uh, it might sound a bit stupid, but let's look at it from this perspective. There are 15 good B schools. I was talking to my friend Hasnan and he, we were discussing this. There are 15 good B schools, tier A category, okay, tier one category. And there are 400 candidates in each B school. So that gives an HR uh, who is hiring a pool of 6,000 candidates. Why do you think that the HR is going to pick you for that 18 lakh or 20 lakh or 30 lakh job? out of those 6,000 candidates. So the competition is going to be cutthroat and you have to really prioritize what, you know, sales your boat. So this is something which you should really look at. If you are spending 20 lakhs for your MBA, it does not guarantee you a 20 lakh placement in return. So you should be, uh, you know, it, it's on your face type of a thing right now. Uh, but yes, that's the hard truth and hard reality. Yeah, Leela, your experience. So for me, it was none of this. It was location, which was number one. <laughs> and uh, then followed by that, it was uh, uh, for me, brand name and profile mattered a lot. Yeah. So I would say location was number one and then uh, brand name profile. And then, of course, if you get a good brand, you get a good profile. Most mostly you generally get a good package as well. So, yeah. But, but you have to give like two scenarios, one for summers, one for finals. I actually... Because for, I, I didn't really, yeah, because I converted, okay. I didn't really think, right, for finals at all. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Pawan. I mean, Bo, Pawan and Somya both have got PPOs, but still I would ask this question. Uh, so, uh, very honestly, to be very, very honest, uh, the humble backgrounds that I come from, money was a big, big priority for me. Uh, so, it was obviously money first, then the brand, then the profile. Brand and profile were again synonymous and synchronous with each other. Uh, luckily, cracked a very good company, which had the second highest stipend on campus and went on to get a PPO from the same. So very happy with this current state of affairs, except for the rural location that I have. <laughs> Apart from that, everything just fell in place. And you can dream of overcoming your financial hurdles and cracking a big package on this particular beautiful college that we are in. And you will get a good opportunity at it. Uh, don't get disheartened with what other people say. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I have a slightly different opinion. Uh, 
till I got JP, for me, brand was number one. And since I have worked in like top brands like HSBC, JP Morgan, I know that brand is really important because through that you get selected for the next companies. But I would say profile matters the most because once you select a particular line, you're, you know that in, this is the line you're going to continue in, you can grow in that. If you've, if you've taken a profile which is not good but is paying high, uh, it, it really doesn't matter because in the future you'll be stuck. It, if it's a niche profile, you'll be stuck. So uh, what matters is you first choose your profile, which role you want to go for in future, and then you select which brands are you looking for, and money to baad mein aajayega. So you will grow along those lines, so you will definitely uh, grow in terms of money as well. So that's a third priority. So it's profile, brand, and then money. I will I will actually second Soumya on this particular thing because again I am going through this phase in my life where I was looking for a job switch to another companies and trust me profile is of utmost importance I think of paramount importance brand doesn't matter even I mean even after you know having interned at Duffin Phelps and you know worked at GS and IB looks like a very fantastic profile and everything looks good you know, glamorous but when I'm looking for a job change only I know what kind of difficulties I'm facing. Because the profile was, you know, ultimately when you work for a multinational bank in India, you will always work on the back end or max to max. You can stretch it to middle end front end to not possible at all because you are from not an Ivy League college. See, NM is like between tier one and tier two. NM is neither tier two nor tier one. So that's like a problem. So nor do you get like you know, front end roles and back end roles is something which you only get in terms of multinational banks. There are some banks which give you like uh, front end roles in India, but those banks the frequency of deals is pretty less. So their growth is restricted. So I'm just talking about your, my experience coming from a very good brand, very good CV. That's what, you know, people said, that's what I got to uh, kind of get an opinion. But when I'm like looking to switch brand is not mattering. It's profile that I've, I've worked for two years. When I sit for an interview, this is what I'm asked. What did you do? How did you contribute to your organization? What was the work that you did? Was it specialized towards say what a finance student would have done? Trust me, the work that I've done in my two years, even a marketing, I would have done it. I'm being very blunt with respect to that. So it's all about profile. At least I can talk from my perspective. Then comes your you know, money and then comes brand. Brand doesn't matter. I will give you guys one task. You know, all the finance people, just go back on LinkedIn. Check out people who would have gotten into you know IB or equity research kind of profiles through NM and see where they have switched. 99% of the people have switched to startups. That means you know the brand preference has totally you know, switched. The first preference becomes your last preference because ultimately your profile, which was your last preference, becomes your first preference because you have gone through your tough phases in your life. You will you'll not find a single person. And this is like my personal research. I've not find a single guy from NMIMS who has switched to a better company than say any, any kind of better profile than what they have worked in IB. It's impossible. So for finance people, I would recommend from my point of view that keep profile as your utmost you know, preference. Money will follow. And obviously, marketing people are bound to be get, I mean, paid more. That's you. That's like a <laughs> thing which you have to adjust with. But, but trust me, finance also, you know, money comes. But after three to four years of your work experience, so you for me, it would be like, as well. So even if your salary, if you see the fixed component is not that much, but bonus component will be really good in finance. That much you can yeah. harsh and I can guarantee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we speak about profile, guys, even when you go forward, like long term perspective, when you come, like when you maybe move abroad and all of that, if you definitely get a good profile in India and you kind of like it and you want to switch when you, you know, move abroad, then switching in the same profile and getting a better company is very much possible. But so that's that's kind of true. So if you if you kind of find the profile that you're fit for and you want to move abroad going forward, it, it does help if you it'll be a good fit. Yeah, just because I've said this, that NM is neither like tier one nor tier two doesn't mean NM is not a good college. Let me let me be very, I mean, rest assured with whatever my opinions are. The college has given me a lot and I probably respect whatever I've got from this college. But, you know, I'm giving you like a factual scenario based on the batch size, based on the, you know, the placement scenarios and everything that we have seen from our, you know, from our eyes itself, we have seen everything. So based on that, we can say, you know, some coveted profiles like, you know, product management or consulting, you'll not find a lot of options in NM, which you'll find in like, you know, colleges like I'm Lucknow, Excel RI, I'm Indore. In fact, I am Indore is considered to be of you know similar league compared to you know NMIMS because you know the batch size is almost similar and kind of same with respect to the rankings also. But because of the IM tag, you'll find a lot of companies like you know BCG, MBB companies like BCG, Bain and McKinsey, they visit IM Indore, but they don't visit NMIMS. 
so ultimately based on these things i'm saying like it's neither tier 2 nor tier 1 so don't 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 take it from a defamation point of view that i'm like defaming and i'm no 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 not at all not not what we want okay harsh and dila so one thing uh, i need to be somewhere else uh, so i would like to drop out of the call uh, sure sure and, yeah to all the audience uh, you guys can connect with me on linkedin this is my username and i love connecting with you all uh, looking forward to have some healthy interactions with you going forward bye bye awesome thank, thank you. you so thank much you. pavan thank you i think we have also kind of reached the fag end of this session where uh, we'll just take like one or two more questions and then right. we kind of wrap this so leela if you can take one or two questions from the from the chat box and then we can wrap it up all right all right so our global markets or trading roles offered by top investment banks at nm oh i think that global would be markets. yeah global, global markets, market yes. roles are of hsbc offers that but uh, uh, trading roles front end especially they are not offered trading desk roles i think gs does offer uh, it's a back end kind of a role no it's a back end uh, yeah but but front end roles are not offered in uh, they don't come for campus placements but with the yeah. profile uh, you can definitely switch to a front end role like i should mention yeah okay just the last question which is from my side everyone would have this particular question you know just the last piece of advice from all three of you on what these students should focus on at this point of time they have like one month at hand may they will be starting with their college in june so what is that one thing that they should keep in their mind for now like for this one month that they have at hand neela you can start um so firstly oh, i'll say prioritize you know have your ranks in place 1 2 3 right now maybe if the ones are going for finance if you all want to start cfa preps you all want to kind of learn the concepts start doing that don't waste any more time you'll have enough time because most of you all are home right uh second try and categorize what you all want to do okay in the first 3 months like we all discussed uh kind of give a thing okay number 1 would be your cads maybe you want to focus on your gpa so okay that's that's your category 1 number 2 would be committees you know you so so what happens is when you all apply for committees at that point of time you all can apply for uh, all the committees possible because not necessary you all will get an interview call from all the committees right so they shortlist you and then even if you apply for 10 committees you might be uh, called for just three interviews so people generally apply for all committees because you want to enjoy that committee life so try and understand what is your viewpoint if you all want to really keep that on a top priority and third is competitions again you know get yourself registered on d2c see if you all really want to just jump into that you all want to do that so keep doing this ranking system and continue that at least for the first 3 months and then going forward you all know if you all get placed well then you all you all can decide how mba would be for you so yeah that's yeah. all from me thank you leela yeah chirag to you yeah i would suggest chill karo abhi <laughs> <laughs> but yeah on a on a serious note since leela has already uh, you know shed light on most of the important aspects i would suggest that whichever specialization you are intending to do read books in that area because that will help you get to learn from the industry ex- experts who have written those books so that will give you a first hand vicarious experience of how that stream is going to be for you so that is something which you should focus on right now because trust me i mean i used to read books but then when I, once my mba started on so many things are there and you are a part of so many things and you know submissions are there club committee interviews are happening and th- there is so much on your plate that you cannot actually get time to you know give yourself some good read so i mean since you have one month left i mean give yourself some good reads and talk to as many people as possible thank you chirag and uh, because you said like there are books which you can read so any one or two books which you could suggest hr as aspirants well i can actually you know put it in the group later on for all the specializations i'll put in different books so they can check it out cool thank you thank you chirag yes somya so i think what leela and chirag I'm not an idea. Uh, I think what Lila and Chirag had covered, uh, it uh, covers everything. But uh, one thing, uh, what I would, what I missed out, and I think you can do is uh, uh, try to connect with as many people on LinkedIn, uh, find your seniors, and uh, because you you can get an idea from their experience what mistakes they had made so that you don't repeat. And uh, that is something that's going to help you beat case study competitions, um, committees, or uh, getting a good CGPA. 
or uh, any preparation even internship and summer placements and other things so the, once you connect with them you for this one month because you won't get time after that uh, you you can ask the specific question what you are looking for because i think here we covered a lot of things may not be specific to you so you can do a one to one uh, interaction with them ha have a chat with them and that's going to help you bridge the gap which uh, you did not uh, what you missing out on so this one month focus on connecting with seniors and like leela had mentioned prioritize find out uh, which area which specialization you are looking for because that is you can't uh, set, put your foot foot on all the uh, uh, on, on, on different boats you can't really, because you will sink then so you need to select which particular specialization uh, you are and role for that matter you want to continue make a list of those companies i know it's too early but make a list and uh, you know because ultimately what matters is your placement everyone knows that so uh, find out which companies you are you want to get into uh, even if you don't get into that you know your rank one has gone rank two rank three is rank two three it's okay because you are sticking to your role get experience in that role in 2 3 years switch in, uh, in along those role get a better company get a better pay so ultimately your role is going to drive you so uh, that is the second important thing and the third important thing is to like make good friends i think uh, uh, the groups we had formed in the first year uh, that drove us till the final year and we still miss out on doing projects and kst competition and No, I'm not uh, uh, telling that no, uh, Hush what Hush had said is right that I'm a nerd or something, but I'm literally saying that we were, we were having a lot of fun in the group. I mean, there will be a lot of free riders and other things. There will be a lot of uh, problems in the group, but you'll at the end of the day you'll you'll sort it out. So uh, ultimately, you'll have a lot of fun doing those case study competitions. Is what I'm trying to say. So make a good group and uh, have fun during those. Uh, don't be don't take everything so seriously. Have fun while uh, preparing our case study answers and solutions, and uh, uh, doing projects and stuff. So that's what matters because um, these projects are all we'll be doing in future also. But that group what you've created, if you're going to fight with that and those things, that that's not going to help. Believe me, till now the group we have, it's we still have the WhatsApp group for that, and we. still talk about those funny incidents that had occurred uh, with the professors and how how much we fought over it how much we fought over to get a good uh, cgpa i think neeta can answer that better because she's seen her herself and me both fighting for marks so so it, it was too much fun doing all that thing in uh, in a two years time so yes. you're going to rejoice that and you uh, think about it and make memories for the two years so guys have fun that's all matters That was yeah, actually, I, I mean, just wanted. I yeah, I just yeah, want sure. to add one small point uh, to what Somya said that it is really important to add people on LinkedIn. But uh, one piece of advice from my end that I have a family of around seven thousand people on LinkedIn. So uh, always while sending in requests to people on LinkedIn, don't send a blind request. Always send it with a personalized note, which you might have interacted with that person or maybe that person is an alum of the university where you graduated from. So always send in a personalized invite while you are sending out the LinkedIn. Uh, invitations that will increase your probability of getting you know connected to that person by leaps and bounds and you will definitely see a change in your linkedin you know connections yeah absolutely and chirag i'll kind of second your point on this that you know networking is something which these people can you know do in in this sort of scenario where everything is happening online you know mba in an online setup but please keep this in mind that once you get connected with an alum or you know anyone from the industry who is a senior leader in the industry just getting connected doesn't mean that you have done the networking networking starts with there where you connect with your alums then when you talk to them please don't jump into the straight away a thing that how much package does gs offer how much package does jp offer trust me they will not be interested in talking to you so talk about their experience talk about what kind of roles they are in what kind of work they do only then you can build a conversation obviously ultimately you will come down to the package you also know and the people whom you are talking to they also know but don't be very upfront about it because that doesn't give a good impression about you in front of your alums and in future if you need say help from them they might not even you know think about putting a referral for you because they would have known that you are only a money oriented person so have a very holistic mind when it comes to your learning package will follow if you have the learning like i said you know there are different case study competition which somya was talking about the first case study i participated in i participated in was in my second year by the time many people had even participated in one case study competition but i started late however i made sure that i was the one who kind of emerged 
you know most victorious compared to my batchmates so it's it's all about the preparation part so one month i mean that one trimester entirely i'd spent preparing for it you know you have to be ready for whatever you're getting into you just can't jump into something if it's not working out okay let's jump into another thing that way you're not landing up anywhere so take your time build your necessary knowledge you know the basic knowledge has to be there you just can't jump into a competition before even joining a college you know many people have reached out to me with respect to some competitions that that are there on day to compete that okay we are developing a business plan please give us some insights how can you develop a business plan when you have not even joined an mba college you don't know the aspects of it so take your time read certain books go through your i mean like like you know these people have been iterating a lot they talk to your seniors kind of get some insights from them after that after some point of time when you have developed the basic knowledge about your specialization about your inclination only then approach case study competitions please keep it like a priority but not like an utmost priority at this point of time your priority is your summers after that you can focus on case study competition but summers if it if it goes out of your hands you just have only one like you have two balls in your court summers and finals if summers goes out of hands you just have only one option left that is your finals so try to utilize this opportunity give your summers properly and only then focus on case study competition because you'll have one and a half years left even after that one and a half years is a lot because every competition ka deadline is i mean that entire timeline for one particular competition not more than a month so you'll still be you know able to take part in a plethora of competitions across domains so do, at this point of time my personal advice would be focus on building your aptitude rather than just jumping into different things okay so that's about advice from our side i think uh, it's it's time that i thank all all the panelists even though uh, uh, pawan and pratyaksh have dropped but i'll kind of still thank them and thank all of us who are already there on this call it was great actually interacting with all of you and uh, you know people from different batches the kind of experiences we had were also different but like i said you know thank you for taking our time guiding these people who are joining mba colleges this year and uh, i mean when i when i'm trying to conclude this session i'll also say that certain things which you have discussed in this session with respect to you know you, you should connect with a lot of your seniors you should connect with uh, have like mock gds and mock pis with your seniors at the same time have like connect with winners of case study competitions get insights from them as to how did they go about it we are all in for that so we had a mentorship program last year where we mentored more than 150 students many students were from nmims and many students have done well we are kind of putting the success stories of our uh, you know calipers last year on our or on our social media platforms and this year as well we are starting with the caliper mentorship program which will start in the month of may the registration will open today itself and trust me if you be a part of this program we will make sure you will be corporate ready and when you'll sit in your summers you'll understand the difference between you and your peers who would not have opted for this program so i am just putting putting the link to that particular website where you can where you can check out you know the details about this program and stuff and uh, based on you know whatever you feel is relevant if you think this is kind of worth it kind of contact people whom we are putting as testimonials on our pages contact them if they give you good insights do enroll for it it is for a noble cause it is it is you know an initi initiative from our side where we are trying to help you guys and at the same time we help the underprivileged students of this of this particular society so people who are below the poverty line we kind of fund their educational expenses through this particular program we did it last year and it was fantastic i kind of personally visited an orphanage amongst this particular you know covid scenario kind of uh, interacted with students whom whose ed education we had sponsored sponsored you know personally so kind of interacted with all those orphan orphan people and it was actually very dis disheartening but at the same time i was happy that at least i was making some contribution from my side as well as the batchmates who had supported me in this particular cause this year we have a bigger team we have a team of 50 mentors last year we have a team of 20 mentors but these 50 mentors are not just mentors these people have been successful in their mba life when i say you know mentors who have done you know, like mba they've graduated from mba colleges that's not success for me success means you have done something good in your mba life the reason why you are better than your peers and we have 50 curated people whom we have kind of you know talked to interacted with them kind of seen their profile what their achievements have been and based on that we have kind of made like a mentor group so be a part of this particular program if you if you want to it's like a two month program it it will end once your college starts so it's it will not clash with your college it will not be a burden on you be a part of it and trust me you will kind of understand the difference you undergo in these two months i'll just give you a small example like this this the name of this program is a caliper mentorship program what does a caliper do it measures distance between two different sides right so what we are trying to portray from this particular name or you know we have like abbreviations what you were before joining this program and what you will be after graduating from this program you'll be able to measure that particular difference in yourself once you sit for your summers 
So this is the concept behind this program. All of you know, we are not just NM alums who are like mentors in this. We have alums from all the top twenty colleges, different working in your dream companies. I had kind of floated a Google form where I had you know known your dream companies. I've kind of gone through it, and we have mentors from all your dream companies. So do enroll for this program if you find it worth it, and then we'll talk when we kind of have like a one-to-one -one private session for the people who enroll for this program. For the other people who do not go for this program, we will still have sessions on every weekend, and going forward, we will have like specific sessions. You know, where we'll have like a session on say digital marketing. So we'll have four panelists from digital marketing from different companies. We'll have sessions on say investment banking or you know different domains that we that currently students might want to get into. So we'll have that going forward. But for this session, I think that's about it. That's a wrap from my side. I put the link to that particular page I was talking about on the chat box. Just go through that link. See it. I will also be putting it on the group, so you can go through it later on as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it from my side, Lila. Any any ending notes from your side? No, nothing at all. I think you covered it pretty well. And thank you so much, Chirag, Somya, Pavan, Pratyak. It was very insightful. A great session. And uh, just to tell you all, uh, many people have got in touch with me individually. I'll still be available. Whoever wants to message, I might be a little late because I'm in a completely different time zone. But uh, we are all here for you. Happy and please you. keep. Uh, you know, shooting questions, we will mentor you all till till the time you guys ace the MBA journey. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. And, and lastly, and lastly, do subscribe to this channel because whatever sessions we are going to do for going forward will be on YouTube itself. So do subscribe to this channel and also like this particular video because you know you can right. share it with your keep people. sharing and even follow all our social media yeah. handles, not just this one. Absolutely. And share it with your friends who might have missed this session because of some reasons. Share it with them. It will be available on YouTube once this session ends. It will be available for them. Yeah. Cool. I think that's about it. Thank you, Leela. Thank you, uh, Chirag. And thank you, Somashree, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank that's you a good guys. Bye. Take care. Thank bye. All the best to everybody. Stay safe and on good luck. Oh, all the best.